I think I'm just going to wing it for about... Oh. I'm not live yet. <laughs> now I am. Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm Dave Medina. There is nobody on the stream with me right now, but uh, we will fix that in a matter of moments. Our friend Kevin on the Cape will join us tonight for the random questions. What, in which in a show that I think is going to be shorter, but I say that every time and it's not. But this time I feel like there may be a legit amount of of <laughs> a amount of brevity in this particular program. It's not a huge topic tonight in terms of what we're going to get into, but but we hope you enjoyed anyway. And before we start, I'll give you a little bit of a tour of of the of the studio. So let's do this, this YouTube exclusive. I'll show you the tour of the studio. So there I am, looking dapper. Not a lot to tell you about. I mean, just just hanging in. Hope you're doing all right, too. And uh, we should have a good time tonight. I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, I don't know why... I don't know why the... I don't know why it's so choppy, but... This will be a prop. This will be a thing of the past in a couple of days. We'll get into that when we get on the air. So settle up, pull back a chair, nestle yourself in, get a beer or a beverage of your choice, and we're going to get started with our program. And we're looking forward to it. It should be fun. I we 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 are scheduled to have Kevin on the Cape with us tonight. We may be scheduled to have a couple cookies join us too, but not counting on that so much because that was. A little, I kind of rushed the invitation to him near the end of the day. And I really did the, the junkie too, but he was fortunate enough to accept. So we'll see if that uh, works along the lines that it does. Should be fun. So stay with us. We're happy to... <laughs> I need to read this. This is, this is just funny. <laughs> All right. So yeah, a lot, a lot to talk about tonight. We'll, we'll be ready to go. And I will see you visually in just a bit. Doc Rivers continues to time and time again not get it when it comes to getting oh let him play you bet one one bone to win 19 I'm <laughs> where what site do you use where you can actually bet one buck <laughs> I, they let you do 50 cent bets oh my goodness right <laughs> <laughs> yeah literally like he dropped Superman down like the drain comes out like, god damn it Superman <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, honey. I don't know where he got that from. From Los Angeles, this is Dave in the City. Part of the Dit Cow Sports Network. Now, here's Dave Medina. Good evening, sports fans! And a pleasure to have you here for the big random question show, which is not to say that it is necessarily any particular sport or topic. This is completely wide open. There is no specific specific aim for this program tonight um i want you to know that we really want to thank you for all for your continued support of this program and we've been through a lot of ups and downs and a lot of cool things as well well i'm happy to announce that uh, we have we started week number two on our new system on obs but this is just some of the new system as a matter of fact we're going to upgrade our hardware in a couple days and hopefully if everything transitions perfectly we will be back and better than ever, being even smoother. This video you see right now will look even better than it is. It looks fine now, obviously, but which the difference is that it's going to be a lot smoother um, in the days and weeks to come. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, we're happy to have some actual viewers on the live stream tonight. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you for finding us. Do the dance. We are happy to have you. If you're watching us on YouTube now, um, go to our full channel page, youtube.com slash go to our, 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 go to this, this, this particular, 
uh, podcast, this show, and you'll notice there's a little entry where you can say something. That is the chat, and that's your opportunity to ask us a random question. So um, we'll give you the rundown on how to do that uh, when we do the random questions in um, when we do the random questions officially. But uh, until we do that, we'll we'll open with you and just hang out and just talk about stuff for a little bit. But um, glad to have you all with us. Seriously, this is great. If you have any comments about the show beyond just the program itself, um, or ma- basically with outside of the realm of random questions, you can tweet us too. We're at Ditcal on Twitter and Facebook.com slash Ditcal as well. So a lot of different ways to do it. I did make a note that on Facebook, you can you can write your random question in the Facebook. I want to see if anyone actually did that. Just a second. I'm going to check this. I have not. <laughs> oh man, that is cool. Um, I've <laughs> that is that's pretty legit. I <laughs> oh man, it's so cool. I gotta see. I gotta see. Can I do this? Let me see. Oh, that is that is super cool. Like, so it is apparently four two one four twenty one day. It was four twenty day yesterday, which of course is the unofficial number for pot. And that got a lot of noise. We got some more noise today. It's at, it's 421 day, which is the model number of the Sennheiser 421. S421, I think it is. Um, that is a very classic microphone. It's been around forever. And I'm seeing on my Facebook, it's happy 421, everyone. And I'm seeing like a whole lot of pictures of the Sennheiser 421. I think there's a number in front of that. Or there's a letter in front of that. No, it's just the 421. Oh, MD421. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. That really is. So, good stuff, definitely. Um, let me see if I can do this. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Browser cap. Doing this on the fly while we wait out the junk man. Now, do you see anything? You don't see anything, right? You don't see anything? Okay. So, that makes sense because I'm going to create a new screen capture. This is going to call Chrome Capture. And I'm going to select. There it is. That's the one. So I'm going to do that right now. There I am. Um, I mean, if I maximize it, then I can do more. There we go. And I'm going to do that. And we will. Looks good. Can you see that, guys? Can you see that on the on the on the stream? Yeah, so this is the um this is a Facebook page. This is my Facebook page. Pretty cool. So you can see that you can you can you can catch up on stuff on here, and this shows you what what I'm after. What I'm, so that's it. Happy four two one, everybody. Sennheiser MD four two one, a classic microphone, been around a million years, and uh, one of a number of go tos in the recording and broadcasting industry. In, which includes, and that's, and another one of those is the one I have right here, the Shure SM7B. This microphone has been around for ages, decades. I'm not even sure people are aware of that. Like, this is an old microphone model. It has been, like, it's like 50 years old. Like, it's, and it still works great. I mean, you see it everywhere. And I'll get into more detail on that at the point where I start. My spinoff program, um, I'm going to have a spinoff program called Davey's Eating a Sandwich where I get into more food than than sports. But, you know, there'll, there'll be some crossover, I'm sure. And we'll just talk about other nonsense and I might play some music. But that's going to be on Twitch. So I can I can even show that to you. Like, I'll show that. What does Davey's Eating a Sandwich look like? Well, it looks like this. Let me show you the screen cap of that, too. But anyway, people on Twitch use this microphone a lot. And it's funny because it's... I think the reason why it works so well is because it it is really good at capturing bass levels. And it is clear. And it's super directional, so you, it doesn't capture too much ambient noise. And it has a built-in windscreen. So it does a lot of things for you in one sitting. That's why I got it, too, because it's it just does a tremendous job. And it's a good voice. Like You, you, you speak into it. It's particularly it's a particularly good voice for radio. It's a good radio microphone. But people do use it and have used it for recording music. 
So it's very interesting to see this all over Twitch as we speak, particularly in the music genre. I mean, everybody's using this microphone. But I've had this microphone a lot longer. I've had this this particular one since 2015 when I upgraded from a Audio Technica AT2020 condenser mic. Also really good, actually. I really like that one too, but condenser mics and, and dynamic mics like this one work completely differently. So you have to change around the, the mixer settings. I could not integrate them both. It took a lot of effort to get them both to coexist on my mixer. So I just stopped. I gave away the AT2020 after a while. I had two of them. And I gave them both away. But this that's just how good this microphone is. It's like it's really good. So let me show you now this new show. Let's see if I got it here. Uh, there we go. There I am. Oh, this is showing you all the stuff I'm following too. But this is my channel. Um, not much to talk about yet. But I mean, it's literally there's nothing on this channel. It's just that's just what I'm doing. <laughs> I have a logo though. I have like a sandwich logo. But it's but, you know, like, honestly, I'm trying to figure out what this show is. But the reality of it is, it's just literally like the same show that I'm doing now, except without the sports. So that's pretty much how I would describe it. I'll have people on. We'll talk about stuff, and it should be a lot of fun. So hopefully that'll that'll be a good time. And uh, I I do want to play like music on here from this little synthesizer. Oh, you can't see that. Okay. Let's see. Maybe. Can you see that? Can you see that? Okay. Uh, that is behind me is this cheap Yamaha synthesizer that we've had in our family for a long time. My mom let me have it. So I'm practicing piano riffs on there. And we'll see how it goes. I mean, I would not consider myself any kind of expert on the piano at all. Like, that is, there is absolutely no way that I would be considered an expert in that field, in that area of uh, what I do. So I would not even, I would not even consider that. Um, let me see. Has anyone commented on? No. So we don't have that scenario at the moment. But. Um, I, I do hope you guys are having a good time. Let me check this chat and see if anyone's asked me a random question or anything. No, nothing so far. But I'm really just, I'm thrilled we have people watching this channel right now. That's really great. So welcome in. Um, again, if you just want to say anything, go. you can type it in the chat or just tweet us at DipCal. I'll check them both um, throughout the course of the next hour and a half or so. We'll see how that looks. But thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's really cool. And we hope to entertain you for the remainder of of this program. And it's rare when I'm doing that much. Um, it's rare when I'm doing that much stuff on my own. Typically, I have someone here with me, but um, not the case tonight. It's uh, you know just I'm just waiting for the junk man. He's got to put his kid to bed, so that's understandable. Respect for him. You know, I I don't mind that. Um, let me see. Do we have anything here? No, still no questions. But I'll check. I'll check our friends at the mikefrancesa.com too. We'll see if they've got anything. Uh, now I'm not going to put that on a screen cap because that would be completely inappropriate. <laughs> you don't even. You wouldn't even know what we were what we were talking about over there. I think that's not in the right. Uh, do 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 do. do, do. People are still commenting about my computer comment. Well, that's that 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 horse is out of the barn. I already got it. <laughs> I got the I got the new computer already. So that's um so no no question no random questions yet. So we will see what happens the rest of the way. Um yeah so glad to have you with us. It's it's really fun. Um what I was laughing. I don't know if this was on the if I got this this is if this made it on the air, but I was laughing pretty hard about the fallout from the Super League. a Basically, do you remember how they were talking about in college football how they were going to start doing super conferences and like the SEC would be like 30 teams and in the all of college football would just wind up being like five conferences. There would be no more mid-majors and they'd all just be giant conferences and all this. Or, or even more than that, I think I was hearing how the prominent FBS schools were going to leave the NCAA and form their own thing. That is the closest comparison I could come up with to what the Super League is. And so some jokers from the outside world came in and they thought they could make this work. And it sounded appealing in the beginning. But 
a lot of people, traditionalists and uh, other football fanatics and just people of common sense chimed in and they hated it. And, and people were just, people were livid. Um, but uh, it'll be, it'll, it's a fascinating scenario, but I don't think it's that big a surprise that it fall, fell on its face. It's not. So I'm reading this from CBS Sports and it and just to break down what this is it's like 12 people 12 12 of the biggest clubs in all of Europe were planning to get away from break away from their respective leagues and form a super league this is so much like college football it really is like uh, this was definitely a conversation in college football as well like all the big SEC teams and the Pac-12 teams and the Big 10 teams like ah eh, we're going to do our own our own little our own little college football organization and and here it is, the soccer trying to do the same thing because they lost the backing of all six Premier League clubs per the CBS Sports article. And then more clubs followed once they noticed that the Premier League was out of the mix. And so the, the, the league is currently on pause, but in, in effectively it's done. I don't, I don't think they're going to do it. And so this statement was put out on Tuesday night by the European Super League itself. And they are convinced, this says, that the current status quo of European football needs to change. I mean, it's making big money. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really have a lot to say about that. So people who follow the sport much more closely than me would have a better feel. Um, we'll see. I, I guess. I guess so. I, <laughs> I don't really have a... I don't really have a... Uh, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say they're wrong. I just think it's, it's funny. Um, so they're saying we are proposing a new European competition because the existing system does not work. Our proposal is aimed at allowing the sport to evolve while generating the resources and stability for the full football pyramid, including helping to overcome the financial difficulties experienced by the entire football community as a result of the pandemic. It would also provide materially enhanced solidarity payments okay, to all football stakeholders. Despite the announced departure of the English clubs, forced to take such decisions put due to the pressure put on them, we are convinced our proposal is fully aligned with European law and regulations and was demonstrate as was demonstrated today by a court decision to protect the Super League from third party actions. Given the current circumstances, we shall reconsider the most appropriate steps to reshape the project, always having in mind our goals of offering fans the best experience possible while enhancing solidarity payments for the entire football community. Um, yeah, this thing seems like it's done. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty ridiculous. So ultimately I think this was, you know, you had, it, it seemed like a good idea on paper, but I just think that's, that a lot of people weren't having it. And it's just like trying too hard, I think, to make to make something spectacular out of a out of the world's biggest clubs. I mean, you know that the mid major clubs in any of these European leagues and anybody else is going to have a fit with respect to the re respect to this attempt to essentially essentially trivialize the existing leagues in professional football in Europe. So I don't think it's a real surprise, but I also think it's funny. It did look like there was some there's some momentum for it, and while I I imagine there is some level of reform that probably should be explored, I'm not at all surprised at um that this thing falling on its face. So it's kind of funny, but it is what it is at this point. So I think that's where we stand. I'm not really a huge fan of using the YouTube studio to track the random questions. So maybe, I don't know if I would do this permanently. I am probably just going to come out of it and I will see if I can come back to it, but we do have people on here. This is great. And I, I thank you for, for your, for tuning in. Um, I am. <laughs> so I just got a comment from this <laughs> JR smug Jerry Recco on the board. He says I should pop up. Harley Ryder for a one-on-one. -on -one. 
And mock post, Harley says, I bet you won't say it to my face. And I am saying, I bet you I will. <laughs> oh, that is good. That is good. I wonder if he, yeah, I, I, uh, I wonder if he took my little, you know, my little thing, my little hand to offer, you know, like just basically say, hey, I, I hope you're good. I'm not sure if he bought into that. Let's see. As long as we've got a few minutes while we wait for Junk, junk Man. Oh, wow, he did. He's in on it. That's cool. Yeah. So you write, say, thanks, Dave. Same here. It was never about you, per se. Just trying to get a cheap laugh or start a conversation. All good, man. All good. I, I knew it. I knew it. It's all good fun, I figured. Anyway, as luck would have it, I did have COVID back around Easter. Wow. It was like a moderate cold. The same cold I get every year. I only got tested because I was due to get my second. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. Good luck to you, man. Hopefully you feel better. Harley, Harley Rider. Wow. Yeah, it's it's never it's never really easy when you get COVID nineteen, and I think a lot of us who've been through it have uh, had varying degrees of uh, suffrage, and some of them are relatively mild, like what you're having, I guess. But it also complicates things. You have to go on a quarantine. It screws up your schedule for doing another shot because you can't do it while you have it. That's just absurd. That all sorts of things can go wrong. So you know. Um, Hope you're okay. Hope you hope you go okay the rest of the way. Hopefully you do get to around at that second shot. Though I guess between that and the antibodies, you'll probably be all right in in in, short, in, in due time. So my best to you. Thanks, thanks for responding. To that I appreciate it. I'm Dave. If you haven't, if you're tuning in late, we are doing a very 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 off topic show tonight. There's literally nothing to talk about here, and I don't think people are that interested in regular season NBA. At this point, and, and to be honest, neither am I. <laughs> but I, I mean, I'd be happy to do an NBA report with our friend Chris in Georgia if we, if he was around for for that. But um, we haven't worked out the scheduling yet. Nonetheless, I just find that this entire last month of the of the NBA season this year, and like, it's why are we playing these games? Like, is anything going to happen in the last month? Like, is anyone really in danger of losing a playoff spot at this point? Like. Maybe someone could jostle up, someone can jostle down. I just, I, I'm probably being selfish in this assessment because I'm like, well, let's just let's just put him in the playoffs now so that LeBron can come back. But no, no, I'm serious though. I don't really think there's anything on the line left to play for. I'll check the standings. I will check the standings. We'll see if, if I'm wrong. But I mean, these games are just like just a lot of preseason to me right now. Like, there's really not much going on. I mean, the Sixers game is good. Like, I, I think the Sixers game against uh, against Phoenix is a very good game. I think it's great. NBA TV nailed it with that with that with that pick. But but personally, I just like we can we can look at this we can look at this ourselves. Let's go over here and take a look while we wait for the junk man. Um, okay, so here's what's on the table. So the Sixers are just. Or ahead, not by a lot. The Sixers and the Nets are fighting back and forth for the top seed in the Eastern Conference. Um, but look, I mean, like, do we really care if the Wizards or the Bulls make get that A spot? Like, no one gives a shit. Like, who cares? Like, and the Wizards are in the mix too. Like, I don't give a shit. That team is terrible. I don't care if they get in the playing game or not. It's a bad basketball team. No one cares. So, and the Hornets should make the playoffs, but they lost a lot of pop without Lamelo. Pacers are should be better than they are. I don't know what their deal is. They seem to all. They, I just like. I can't even believe they're under five hundred. Like, why are they under five hundred? That should be a much better team than they are. West. Interestingly, Suns. A lot of people talked up the Suns a few weeks ago when they were when at one point they had the number one seed in the in the Western Conference. Um, but you'll see here, they fell to the number two spot. I think the they've regressed to the mean somewhat, and the Jazz had a little bit of a bobble, but they've honestly been pretty good since that point. Um, Suns are playing good anyway, though. They're playing good basketball, and they're really giving Philadelphia everything tonight. And the Clippers are fine. The Nuggets lost Jamal Murray, which is a horrible, horrible loss. That's going to really hurt them in the playoffs, but they're going to make it. I mean, there's nothing to talk about there. 
Lakers, just keep treading water as best you can. I mean, they lose one out of every five games without those without without uh, LeBron and and Davis there, and that's all right. I mean, that's that's not all right, but it will be all right if they can just continue to tread water. And, you know, every win counts. I think they had a nice win against – very nice win against Utah. That's huge. So anything you can get until they get back I think is going to be big. Just get in there. I think they're going to be fine. Portland's fine. Dallas is fine. Memphis is fine. Golden State. I mean, that's the power of – that's the power of Steph Curry. He, he can keep – he can will that team to win games. That looks pretty good. Spurs are fine. The Pelicans should already be eliminated. They, You know what? I, I'm kind of through with them. Let me go back to let me go back to my cam. Like, I'm really through with that team. I've had enough of them. Like, you keep talking to me about how talented they are. How are they that bad? It's because their defense sucks. It's a terrible defense. It is a horrible defensive team. They, and it's also a poorly run team. I was watching some of the game last night against the Nets, and and. They just don't give the ball to Zion Williamson enough. Like he, they, they have gone in there, and they keep giving it to Ingram, and they keep giving it to the Jackson Hayes and other clowns like that. It's just like, guys, how about or you know, Lonzo Ball? How about giving the ball to the guy that's the best player on the team? He had thirty-one points last night. He probably would have had forty-one points last night if they had given if they let him play. Like they don't, they don't give him the ball enough. Like as mu- as good as that was, he could have had more points. It's just like you give him the ball every time. Like the Sixers never had issues giving the ball to Allen Iverson when they had the ball when they had the when they had possession. Like just give him the ball. Like well, we gotta set up, set him up, and post him up. Give him the damn ball. Just give him the ball, and don't even like let Lonzo walk it up the court. Just give him the ball and let him operate the offense. All the great offenses know their strengths, and that's his one. That's their strength right there. Let him have it. Like let him have it from the beginning, off the inbound. Like don't wait until he's in the post. He's not Kareem. Like just give him the ball already. You don't need him to be Kareem. He's got such great moves. He can just he can go from like the top of the key all the way to the basket in like two seconds. It doesn't matter who's guarding him. I mean, he can make Rudy Gobert look silly, which is pointed out to me by uh, Chris Vernon, great uh, NBA commentator and a host of his own show in Memphis. Um, but anyway, it's just, I just think it's ridiculous. Like the whole thing is just so silly. Like, uh, so with that in mind, I think that's a poorly run team, poorly run organization, bad coaching. Yeah. I said it. I said that. I think they're bad. They're poorly coached. I think they're poorly coached. Dan Van Gundy is not a good coach for them, for them. Like, he's a good coach, but he doesn't fit these guys. Like he's not utilizing, that talent to its potential. So I'm not impressed with his coaching this year. It's just not very good. So let me (laughs) comments on the board. David Harley. If David Harley can bury the hatchet, anyone can. (laughs) Ah, that's good. That is so good. And then some, some component, some, some complaints. Um, some complaints about the Yankee game. Let's see. Oh, Mike's retirement tour chimes in. He says, "Hi, Dave. This post is for TR, but I think you just talked about the Sixers more than WIP since the season started." <laughs> That's a fucking fact too, because I think they're in, they're big on the draft right now, right? They're probably talking the Eagles draft probably like all week, like every hour. They're just talking about the Eagles draft. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. It's fuck. It's true. It's true. Like they, they're so pent up on the Eagles. It's such a waste talking about the Eagles right now. They're so bad. Like, who cares? Whoever they, <laughs> they can. Border's flying tonight. This is great. If you guys are looking for a place to laugh, but go to the MikeFrancesa dot com right now. This is really <laughs> good. Oh man, this is so good. So if you're watching the game, if you're watching the show right now on YouTube. Put your random questions over there too, because I, I think I'll find them there. So we'll take them. I don't know if Kevin is going to show up now. It's been like twenty minutes. I, I I'm very interested to see if he's actually going to be on the show. But <laughs> uh,
All right, I guess. That's kind of stupid, but 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 that's funny anyway. Okay, so um, let us see. Uh, yeah. So thanks, guys. I appreciate you you tuning in. Um, I guess I'll give you updates on the scores. Be like Mike Frances over here. Ah, <sighs> the show is so much better when you have people on it. It gets, but we'll do the best we can. Okay, so in baseball, we had a wacky one between the, the Twins and the. A hey, look who's back in town! Forget the baseball scores. We've got our guy. Here we go. Let's put it. Let, oh, I'm using the wrong button. Let's put him in here. Oh my goodness, I'm pumped. This is great. This is super great. So, Kev, I, I can't... I'm going to pot you up in a moment, but but first, I need to tell you guys that we have just about transitioned to our favorite moment of every podcast. It really is. I'm kind of waiting for... I'm just waiting for Kevin to turn on his camera. Okay, there we go. He's turned on his camera. And we are ready to go full throttle into the moment that everyone anticipates here on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and everything else. The board, all the stuff. America's favorite moment in Sports Talk Podcasting. Do the dance. It's time for random questions. Good stuff. In the city with Kevin on the cake. I love it. And he's back, coming in, kind of like cold turkey, because uh, I didn't really give him a chance to warm up or anything, but... We love you, Kev. How's it going tonight? Cold turkey. I love it. Yeah. How's everything? That's where, I go, that's where I'm best. <laughs> nice. Nice. Good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I am. I am. Uh, it's... I I have done some serious filibustering tonight. Like, I think I was on really? for like 25 minutes, like just talking, like talking and trying to look up comments and stuff. And it was a very good challenge for me. And... um so speaking of challenges, how how to go getting Cody into bed? Not 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 easy. No, <laughs> I knew it was gonna be trouble. I knew it was gonna be trouble, Dave. When he's had a very late nap, mm. so the kid, yeah, he's having he's having some rough times, you know. Um, I'd say the sister, the new sister, he's not handling very well. Oh, look you at know, that! Having the uh, someone to share the attention with. Oh wow, classic stuff, classic sibling yeah, rivalry. Look at this. Yeah. That's it. that's that's it. Like not wow. having his mom for whenever he wants and So wow. yeah, he's he's adjusting. Cool. It's been interesting. Oh yeah. But he's yeah. yeah, he's still awesome. But yeah, it's he's asleep now, barely. I mean, I just just a couple minutes ago he went finally went to sleep. Mhm. Mm now, your 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 newest one is named Julie. June. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Start with a J. I knew it. But um, June is awesome. So, so June born in uh, was it March? February? March eighth. Wow. The yeah, March. man. Yeah, that's awesome. Man, your family's really, really starting to come together. It's so cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. So what what's going on here in the city? Well, I I I think we are on the precipice of getting a new computer. So that is wow. going to improve the facilities quite a bit. Um, this is quite an investment though. I, I just hope I can, I hope I can maintain the ability to, you know, to, because you got, yeah, I can, I was able to set up like payments on it, but no interest. So there's, it's a perfectly fine as long as I pay it off. Let's just make sure that that happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't pay interest. That's crap. Oh, it's the worst, the worst, you know? So I'm just, I'm just trying to catch up to you. You have your great laptop. I mean, you, it's all. Did you use your Biden bucks for this? Um, no, that was already accounted for with the couch. Oh, the couch. That's right. <laughs> so I'm on my own for this one. We'll do what I, well, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. So nice. See. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing you probably are seeing is too. Like when you do, when you do a show like this and you have, you've been doing shows for a little while and it's right. On, I know you, you, you're on pause, but, but when you were doing the shows, you may, you probably noticed that. You, it's the you. You slowly start to keep adding to the the, the budget to, to update yes. certain things and so on, right? Oh yes, you start. I had, I have, I do still. I have a budget, and I kind of, 
I think I was on pace to, I was, I was doing pretty good. Um, and obviously now I'm going to, I'm going to come in under budget cause I'm taking a break. So I turned off a couple of things. So, but yeah, mm-hmm. sticking to that budget can be tough, especially when you, you see all the bells and whistles out there that can help you do, do different things. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a fun, but man, I, I mean, it showed in your, pre, in your, in your podcast work, it was awesome. So I won't get into oh, that again, I, I'm, but I, but yeah, thank you. I mean, I say I didn't want to get into it again. Cause like we did our test show and we, we talked about that all in, in depth and we're, did you know, did you enjoy all the comments from all your fellow listeners? Like how much? Oh yeah. It? That's, that's the best mm-hmm. by far. Um, that's, um, I don't, I've always been this way in in life, I guess. Other, but I don't really change my course based on what people say. But the feedback overall is is really it's really cool. It's really constructive. It's not. It's never going to make me change the way I do something, unless it's you know something you totally miss, like uh, something that's a kind of a, maybe offensive or something that. I didn't realize I was doing, I mean, I, I would change any, some sort of tactic that way, but for the most part, like the direction of the show or like a music thing or, um, a story or an interview or something, the feedback's really cool. That is cool. Yeah. I, I mean, that's like the most gratifying thing about this. And, um, we're testing a few things tonight. Nice. Um, and among them are the random question system. I'm going to check the chat and see. We actually we do have a chat, but it's just not that great. But I'll check it right now just to see. But we have a YouTube chat. We'll see if anyone a- asks any questions. It is that time. So if you guys have a question for us, write the word question followed by the question itself. And then we'll we'll take a look and see what you had to say. I don't see anything in the chat. So it looks like that's not in effect. But But yeah, write the word question followed by the question itself. You can do this in a, many, a number of different venues. So the, obviously, you guys aren't doing it on the YouTube chat. That's fine, whatever. But if you want to do it on the board, themicrancessa.com, do it there. That's fine. I'll read, I'll read the thread, and we'll see if you have a question there. If you want to do it on Twitter, at Ditcow. If you want to do it on Facebook, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Ditcow. Look for our posts with the live feed, which is up there now. And then write a question in there. And I'll look through all of them, and we're going to see if we have some, some juice. So, um, oh, and I, sh- and I have figured out, Kevin, how to share a screen. So I can show you what the Cinerama Dome looked like in its glory days, like just, you know, like a few years ago. Um, like in the modern days, let's say. It, it is, and it's just, it just crushes me you can't see this in person. But it was really, really fun. So I'll show that to you now. I'm going to show you. So this is now, this is called a screen capture. There you go. You see that? Isn't that cool? So you can see, so you can see inside of here. Yeah. And this is what it looks like. Oh, that's so small. I don't like that one. Um, But this gives you an idea. Like you see right here on the left-hand side. Uh, I'll open this in another tab. But if you look at this one, this gives yep. you a feel for what that looks like. Yeah, you can see. I mentioned, you know, there's there's like the slope seating. This is the stadium level seating. Got this little honeycomb effect on the top. The curtains. It's just, it's just so gorgeous. I mean, where is that? Well, this is in Hollywood. This is where this this is where the arc light was, when which is now closed. So. Oh. Yeah. Look how many people are in there? Like just closed for now? No, no, no. The... They, oh, you didn't see the show. Okay. No, they closed it permanently. At least as okay. far as we know, unless someone buys it out. Unless someone buys it out, it's gone for good, and that that hurts. Some some rich person just gonna not buy it for their own personal viewing. Well, we speculated that that rich person could be Quentin Tarantino, which eh, how rich is he? I mean, is he that rich? I don't You're know. Need like, I mean, that's a big place. How many seats is that? Well, I mean, and the dome has operated it. The the dome has eight hundred seats, or it did. Okay. And any of the other theaters, because they have other theaters too, like the regular theaters attached to it. And I don't know, maybe the combined seating total of all of them might be like a couple thousand. I'm not sure. But it's not gonna be like when Kramer got you know got the movie theater and you know got the old movies going. That was like a tiny little movie theater with some popcorn. <laughs> I think Quentin Tarantino's gonna be out serving drinks and stuff. No, no, he's already he already did that. 
he, there's a theater he owns on, I think it's on Beverly Boulevard or somewhere called, or the fair, it's, I forget what it's called, but it's, um, but he does own a little theater and he's shown like movies on there. So he already has that. Like it's already, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's very charming. Like it's just a little, it's an old theater that was kind of sitting there and it wasn't being used anymore. Um, I'll show you that one. The new Beverly cinema. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one, yeah. So new Beverly Cinema, and he showed his own movies on there, obviously. Want to take a look at that? I would love him to show like outtakes, like thing, you know, the stuff that didn't get into the some of the movies, mm -hmm. or like his behind the scenes stuff. That would be really cool. It's always possible that that's on the table. I'll show you what that looks like. So here, from my Google search, this is what I got. So you can see this is a kind of a cool visual here on the right hand side. This is when, yeah, this isn't from the before times, obviously, but yeah. So that's interesting. He's showing his own movie up there, but that's that makes sense. It's, there's nothing wrong there. There's a shot, like a like a further back shot. It's on Beverly Boulevard, and then I guess this is what it looks like on the inside. It's not that big. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's just it's a pretty small thing. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So um, yeah, it is cool. It is cool. I like it a lot. I think that's really cool. So yeah, yeah, that's small. Wow. I thought the arrow was small. That's actually pretty small. <laughs> but it, it's cool. So yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's good for there. Um, oh, goodness. That's funny. I, I knew that was going to happen. That's because I threw this together. I didn't, I didn't plan this. That's because I'm not supposed to be on the slide, Dave. Okay. There, <laughs> there we go. There it is. There it is. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay. Um, so I want to tell at, before we get into questions, I just want to get, get an update on your fan duel. Situation, ah. FanDuel. <laughs> You've been doing pretty well. Like you won. Surprisingly, yeah. Great job out of you. So your thoughts as you you start the first month of baseball. It must be either like I can't it can't be beginner's luck because I had a, I was on I did it last year or the year before because I don't even remember doing it because but I had to have because when I tried to sign in they were like you already have a password and you already have. But I, for April, right? We're almost there. We're still in April. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm actually in in the positive. Shocking. That's pretty like impressive. Two first place, I think, and one second, a couple third, I think maybe. Um, not 100 percent sure, but it's been really fun. Uh, and I don't even. I think even if I lost, it would be fun. I mean, I'm watching baseball again. I haven't watched baseball in a long time. Um, figuring out Fanduel is is a thing in itself. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's a cool thing. I wish I had this twenty years ago when I was, you know, just gambling a lot more and stuff. But it's cool. I'm glad you like it. You know, it seems like most of the same people are in our thing each yes. night, right? Yes, correct. Okay, we have a core group, a lot of loyal customers in our group. You know, the two that run the baseball, the one that runs the baseball ones is Leo, Leo is Sinatra from the board. Okay, and his brother, of course, Ron in New Jersey. Oh, no brothers. As, yep. Yeah, the agency. Oh, you knew that, right? Didn't you? No, I had no. No, no. You didn't know no that. Way. Oh Never. man, I'm gonna tell Beebs and Leo that tomorrow. I didn't realize you didn't know that. I thought you did. I thought everybody knew that You're, right now. Are you serious? Yeah, seriously. They're from the same wow. family. Yeah. <laughs> but did did we know that for like a while on the board, or was that like uh, announced later? It was pretty common knowledge, I think. Probably. Oh man. In the last... For the people who have common knowledge, it's obviously not me. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, who else is related on there? Um, I can't answer that one. This is not related to anybody. <laughs> I mean, be scary. Not that we know of. <laughs> um, wow, they're brothers. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Who's it's older? pretty cool for sure. For sure, they have Which great families, older? both of them. Um, yeah, I mean, Leo is not as Leo doesn't talk as much about his family life as as perhaps agency does, but but he does have a very nice family. I I know that. And I've heard Does about. He, is he is he also like in the um, snapping necks category? Oh, he can snap some necks. He is yeah. a big time. He can big time like. And is, is, is he the little brother or the big brother? He is a big brother. Yeah. Oh, okay. He was a big brother. So, agency, aka Beebs, aka BBAA, aka the agency, is the little brother. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I, mean, I, I I can see that one. Yep. That's cool. I didn't know that. Not no 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 
didn't not even close. Not even kidding. Interesting. Yeah, so interesting. So sometimes I, I mean, there are times where I think I act clueless, you know, just for the sake of the show. But this is not one of those times. <laughs> no worries. No worries. But uh, you know, I mean, you're not on as much as m- most of us too. So that that's probably part of it. Like. Oh yeah, I haven't been on like regularly for over a year, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. But that doesn't mean I should. I still should have known that because before I was on for how many years in a row? Mm-hmm. A long time. Yeah. Five years. I don't know. I don't it doesn't know. matter. Yeah. It's cool. Good. good to know. Yep. So well, two means... good guys. So good. Good. Uh, good on their parents. Wherever their parents are, they should. They should be proud because they got two good kids. Yeah. I'm being told by LT56 that Yachts was the next... But they all were neck snappers. I mean, Yachts was the particular net... net the, the, the known net, neck snapper, but Here's I... Here's the thing about Yachts, though. I've met Yachts, and um, Yachts is a neck snapper in appearance only. Right, right, right. Yachts right. is one of the kindest, gentlest humans. Yeah, absolutely. And I, this is just from maybe, like, one phone conversation and one night at a bar in Cape Cod where he came up and visited and I mean yeah he would totally snap my neck and snap anyone's but I feel like he he knows that too and he knows his his strength plus he's an attorney so he's sort of he uh I think he's more of he would kind of talk his talk you out of it like you really want to do this like (laughs) he he, he would he would let you off of the hook so many ways he'd give you so many chances before he snapped your neck right yeah uh, and plus he's such a he's such a nice person and such a such a good guy so yeah but he um he's definitely a neck snapper as well just size wise and he's got the bald head and or i mean he did it at the time yeah yeah uh, but yeah you walk i walk into a, around in a bar with him next to him and i'm like yeah like don't push me i'll be better you know yeah guy looks at me weird i'm like don't look at me weird like all of a sudden you get t- <laughs> you get tougher and like you're like no one's looking at you weird, dude. Just cut it out because <laughs> you know he's behind you. So you're like, yeah, sure. talk to him. Uh, that's good. So let me see. Let's see if we have any questions in on this in the situation. Uh, do 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 do. Let's see. Give us a give us a question, guys. Let's see. Let's see. A so how many do you, how many people do you have listening now? To, is this like, so? Is this like your new show? I, I'm sort of confused because obviously I don't know. That those guys were brothers. Uh. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I I will say honestly, there are people who were on. In, were I guess I I guess I didn't realize I'm like one of the few that was actually onto that early, because the rest of the board is saying that they didn't really know about it till recently too. So actually, in fairness to you, I guess this is, this maybe was a recent development for a lot of people. So okay, uh-huh. my bad. See? My bad. I'm the I'm just the the. Uh... The surrogate for the average American board member. <laughs> yeah, this is really wild. SJR and No Label also were not completely keen to it until recently. So <laughs> we got a PM too, but I'm and not gonna... Jerry Recco has been on the board forever. Yep. So I don't feel so bad now knowing, not nice. knowing. Um, well, I want to tell the people who are on the board. I, and I, 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 people are struggling to figure out how to do YouTube chat, and I don't blame you because it stuck. It sucks. Just post it on the board. I'm seeing your posts on the board. Did, Put it on the. Didn't board. I do that last time? There was a point. Well, you did a thread. Some like you did. You did like a special like RQ thread, which like before like the week of the show, which made sense. So that was a cool idea. When we were when you were testing it out the other day, I was like typing on into YouTube. Oh yeah, no that that totally worked. Yeah yeah that totally worked. But I'm just saying like. Nobody else seems to be able to do that. <laughs> so it's just, I'm going to it and I'm not seeing any questions. So I, I guess. I see it. Well, there's. Oh, I see questions on here now. This just happened. Oh, oh okay, 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 okay. Dave eat eating a sandwich. Yeah, there I am. Um, wow, that's cool. So you actually do. All right. And I see questions. Okay. So there are two, there are some questions. Um, gosh, I can't believe we have actual questions on here. This I mean, awesome. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta help these guys out and, and do their questions. They probably, they, you said that they sat with you for 25 minutes while you just had your thumb up your butt. <laughs> Apparently, but let's, let's get to the questions. All right. So question number one, <laughs> no comment on the, Hey, the... I was, I was trying to make sure everything was working right. I know this is, you have a lot. Did they know that? So have you kind of tell them all the things things you're doing because you told me last week we we're doing mm-hmm. this it seems like a lot 
It is but a it's lot. cool. It's exciting. Yeah. Well, I don't want to make a big deal out of it. I mean, I, I didn't even tell you that I fell on my rib cage last week when I did that test show with you. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been in pain for a while. I'm, we don't, we don't want to talk about your problems while they're happening. You tell us about them when they're over. All right. But no, I'm, they're, it's almost over now. I'm almost done. It's almost over. This is the very last of it right here. Just like this coming spot. coming from the guy who co- who was constantly talking about his problems on the show. So. <laughs> right, right. Don't listen to me. <laughs> Good times. Okay, let's. Uh, we got some questions. This is great. So, no label, aka Mortman, asked this. Uh, oh yeah, he he liked the 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 scene from It's a Mad 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 World that I showed earlier in the screen cap. You know, when I showed you that that photo of the the arc light, the Cinerama Dome. So on the screen was a scene from that movie from the 60s. It's a mad, 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 mad world. Yeah, true story. So very cool. Okay, here's the first question. Kevin is known... This is actually from Mike's Retirement Tour. That's one of the guys on the board. The question is, Kevin is known as a health-conscious and creative person. Does he, meaning you, have any advice for completing creative projects while still staying healthy and avoiding burnout? I do, um, but that's very nice for them to say. Health conscious. That's certainly within the last five years, and creative is yeah. But um, that's actually a really good question. And right off the top of my head, my answer um, that was say that again. So it was while Mike's retirement avoiding tour. burnout was the end, right? Which was oh, very, sorry, yeah, yeah, which mm-hmm. is extremely important. Mm-hmm. Creative. People, it's very, it's, it's a difficult road. Um, you're very hard. Most creative people that I know, myself included, are very hard on themselves. They often think what they're doing is not good, not good enough. You know, why should I even bother? There's someone else who's already thought of this idea. It's the constant, these kind of overthinkers. My advice for creative people is to stop going it alone. Uh, is involve other people, um, whether they're other creative people or they're just people that you trust. So, for example, if you you wanted to just you've always wanted to be like take art classes, but think you're terrible, and or you know to go to one of those group group classes, you know where you have the you paint some you know a model or whatever, and meet other people that have your interests, and they can kind of bring something out of you or even if it's just like your girlfriend or your boyfriend whatever kind of relationship you've got um ask them to look at something you made or something you wrote or an idea you had uh because there are these we need creative people like i this last year has shown me even more that creative people are essential in in our world and when the stuff it kind of it just exists in your head or on your laptop or in your private studio it, to me it's almost like it hasn't even been born yet it's still in utero and it's not born until someone else sees it until you kind of make it public and get and feedback is a little freaky when it comes to your own brain and heart and your your creativity putting it out there which is really hard to do so i understand people being hesitant to do that but you've got it taking that step is essential and even if it doesn't go anywhere, even if you're like, oh, well, I took an art class and I learned I really prefer just my my IT job at, at work and I'll le- leave that for when I retire or I've decided I want to write comic books instead or something. Just finding out, getting some feedback from people you trust. You don't have to just put it on and Facebook or whatever, that kind of crap when it's just random people posting on stuff. I'm, I'm not for that either. I, I'm for people who will tell you the truth and people you can trust and believe in and people who will, you know, will try, will, will build you up if, if they will find something good, you know, cause there's going to, there's going to be something good no matter if it's in it, there'll be a piece. Like I can read a short story that someone wrote or, and I'll find, even if it's overall not so great, you can still find something and just doing it and completing it is a, it's something to to applaud. Yeah. So I would say stop. And I think that does that does count for as I'm thinking about avoiding burnout because I think a lot of burnout comes because you think it's all on you 
all on your shoulders. And um, that's kind of what people end up giving up. Uh, but yeah, so making things public or, or making them known to people that you, you love mm. and trust and stuff, it would be my advice. I love that. Completing creative projects. Yeah. I mean, don't go it alone. I remember your blog, like shortly after you went through the surgery and that was a big hit. So that, that was a, that was really, yeah, that, that, that was a surprise how much of a, like talk about, I think that was, those things were more commented on than anything I've ever done. Um, but yeah. And that was scary too, in the beginning to write some of that stuff. Cause in some of that, I was writing some dark thoughts and, you know, if things didn't go right or if I couldn't figure this out, um, which I'm still trying to figure it out, obviously, but yeah. Yeah. You're putting, yeah. Hitting that, hitting that like publish button. Yeah. You know, on that blog and you're like, well, maybe it'll just, or even on the podcast and stuff, I would always think like, well, I know my mom's going to listen or my mom's going to read it after that. I have no idea. So mm. it's uh it's an interesting process, but for all those creative people that we need to creative people now, I mean, to keep just pumping out new, new ideas and, and new stories and, and inspire. It's so inspiring to read or to watch something that someone almost created out of thin air. Uh, it's really cool. So keep on it. Love it. That's a great, that's really great sentiments on your part. Um, here comes the next question. Here we go. From Brian, from no label. He asks, what's your favorite exit off the Merritt Parkway? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That Merritt Parkway is a, wasn't just an, it, it, to me, it, it's, I have a two li two different lives with the Merritt Parkway. One was when I was a young <laughs> youngster in my travel baseball days of like 16, 17, 18 years old, going up and down, leaving, you know, we were on this Northern Westchester team, which was really good. And we would play all these teams in Connecticut and just a bunch of just, just six, like 16, 17 year old guys. Awesome. Awesome team. Awesome group of guys. And we would go to games in Stanford or, Norwalk, even some fur further ones out. Um, and then my life as an older guy, when we moved back and I took that job in Stanford and for some reason I thought Milford, which is only like 38 miles away, but I thought that would be a good commuting time, but not realizing it's been, it had been 20 years and it took me like two hours each way to go to work, mostly on the merit. So the Merritt Parkway then became my, just something I learned to just loathe, which is horrible because it's a beautiful road. It's one of the nicest parkways that I've ever been on. And I've driven around the whole country. It's, there's just green everywhere and it's not, you, you're not, commercial vehicles aren't allowed. So it's, it's, you know, it's just, well, it doesn't mean they don't try because sometimes I'll get caught and stop the whole thing. But the traffic was just atrocious. However, question was what was my favorite exit and it was as an older guy it was the exit in milford connecticut because mm -hmm. that would mean i would finally have gotten home ah to, there you go which was my fiance at the time now wife uh uh but back in the day i mean we we did a lot of uh i don't know it's a that's a tough one there's that um i would say my Overall, though, I think it's well, my memory is always a little sketchy, but he'll, it's I think it's one one twenty. It's not one twenty four, but it's like High Ridge Road. I think is the name of the road. They, they'll they'll know, and uh, you can either you get you coming uh, west, and in High Ridge Road, I think is the name. Of it. And if you get down and you make a right, I can go straight back into where I grew up in Westchester and in, in, in central Northern Westchester, or I can go left down into downtown Stanford, which is where I spent time at NBC and uh, later at the, at the lobster company opening the restaurant. Um, so as far as like his, history and, and my memories, that high Ridge road, I'm pretty sure it's high Ridge. There's long Ridge road too. So sometimes I, I get them confused, but right around there is my favorite area. That's awesome, man. So uh, just a reminder to anybody who's tuning in uh, late, and by the way, do you know what exit number that was? Like, would you remember what the exit number uh, was? 
Mm, no. Um, That's an interesting question. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, it's not, 95 is, is a, you, you, you go by the numbers more, mm-hmm. where the merit, I always went more by the roads that they were. I wouldn't notice the numbers as much for some reason. I don't know if it's the mm-hmm. same for, for Brian, but 95 is always like, I know 15 is Norwalk and, you know, uh, I would get off eight for, for work. And then my friends in like Greenwich were three or four. And then my sister in Fairfield was 22 and um, 24 was route eight to go up to Sunni's parents' house. So you kind of remember the numbers on 95, but the merit was more, it's, I think it's just a different kind of road. You just, it's more like neighborhoody and you know, you don't, so you're more like inclined to know the, the names of the roads. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, because I know that. I know. I mean, I know a little bit of that area. I was in Stanford for a little bit during one of my trips out east. So, I know it's a lot more. What's the word? Charming? Like small? I mean, I'm not gonna say small town. Because yeah, and then it becomes. And that was always as far as two with my family. The merit um, becomes when it goes into New York. It becomes the hutch. So, like, I believe the merit is just the merit in Connecticut. It's not the merit when it goes into New York. It becomes the hutch. Huh. The Hutchinson River Parkway, which my dad is a county policeman for all those years the that was a county road so he would he was he patrolled the hutch for probably his first like five or six years um on the county police so that's and then that's what goes down into harrison and uh larchmont and marinick which is another big time uh summer league baseball area that we used to attack and play Mm -hmm. these just unbelievable team down there in pelham and all these other places so that whole i love that whole stretch just um that commute was it was my own fault for thinking I could do that, but that's what that soured me on it. But overall, I still have I have wonderful memories of that area. That's cool. And Rye, Rye, another is another one right off there. Oh yeah. man, you're just listing out so many caller locations. You know, guy in Rye, guy in Brick, guy in Mary. Oh, you didn't say Brick, but uh, you said, you know, and uh, what was the other one you said? Yeah, I think we do have a lot of. Uh, I'm not sure. I Milford. don't know. Milford, but yeah, Milford. That's right. Yeah, I don't know about this, but that kind of area of Westchester, Southern Connecticut, I do think the board had a a good representation yeah. of those kind of people. I yeah. don't know that. I'm just assuming just by the teams they liked and the kind of stuff they talked about and the places they used to hang out. Mm-hmm. What would you say is better in that particular area? The bagels, the deli, or the pizza? That's so random. Oh my god. Um, random. <laughs> so what are the three or what's the better of those three? Yeah, like what is stronger in that particular well, area? Well, here's the deal is that I'll tell I'll tell them the guys this especially the ones that are from that is those three things are better in that area than any other area that I've ever been in. Like wow. those three th- things I miss those three things immeasurably. More than from, Brooklyn and like more than New Haven? I, I don't care about Brooklyn. I don't go I'm not I'm not <laughs> whatever. I have, I think I've been in Brooklyn once and they can they can have their hipster stuff and they can leave it cause... But Junkie, what about Wolf King? Well, not Wolfgang Puck. I'm, what about um, Puck. Peter Luger's? Peter Luger's. All right. No well, love for so Peter Luger's. That's one. That's one restaurant. And no, I don't have love for Peter Luger's because those guys can go <laughs> kick my ass. Their attitudes I... and they're like, you know, you got to order this way and that way. I'm like, you know. Well, they scooped the soup Nazi by like 50 years for sure. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. It's just some old. It's just an excuse to be a dick. Like, sorry. <laughs> And, and I don't know any, I haven't been there forever, but yeah, to look at you weird. If you don't want a steak, it's like, dude, I don't want to die when I'm 50 <laughs> either. So I mix it up every once in a while. I have chicken or salmon. God, Peter Lugers, <laughs> whatever. All right. But, 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 but you I'm say sure that's that probably the, the... some kind of sin, with the board people, but, um, it's really amazing. I also you... don't eat red meat anymore either. So they right, right. No, that, 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 run really me out of the thing. That colors or the I haven't question, actually sure. eat red meat for a while. Yeah. But so the bagels, my my pick of those three would be the bagels okay. because they're just phenomenal. And it's like I can't. It's like bagels to me almost when I go in that when I go home to that area. I don't even. Un, it's like you never know, drive to like work or somewhere where you where you, you go to some place a lot. So you end up sometimes driving and you don't even remember the drive. You're like, how did I get to work so fast? And your subconscious mm-hmm. takes over. Mm-hmm. My subconscious just takes me to a bagel place. It just, I'm anywhere I'm in, like in Westchester somewhere. And I just turn, I'm like, oh my God, there's a, I got, let's, and it just happens. And I'm not eating that way with pizza or anything, but bagel, I'm like, I have to get one. 
Wow. Now, immediately. Well, they are exceptional. And those old school delis, like we we had a, my Sunni's grandmother died a couple of years ago and she had grown up in Larchmont, in, which is in Westchester down, which is in Southern Westchester. But she was in North Carolina, but they had a service for her. And uh, they're like, what are we going to do for food afterwards? And I'm like, don't worry, I got it. You know, and I just wanted to be in charge of that because not just I like food and all that stuff, but I wanted to be able to go into a bunch of different delis in Maranick and East Chester or wherever and talk to them and taste some food and order the sandwiches and order the pasta salads and all that other stuff and just get to talk to the men and women that I used to all the time for all those kind of things. So that was really cool. That was like my, that was a lot of fun for me. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We went to a place right on, right in Mamaronic, uh, which has just so many great stuff. So many still, so many like kind of old school Italians. And so mm. I'm not me. sure that was even an answer to your question, but it's okay. uh, I would I... pick bagels over those three places to go to first, mm-hmm. but all three of those things that exist down there are just, and they're all good. Even the bad ones are good. Oh, it's funny. It's, they're so good. I need to go over there and see this for myself. Yeah, and you can, yeah, keep, keep, you guys can, whoever, maybe that's just your brain, but you guys can have Brooklyn, and I, <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want any part of it. I like Brooklyn, but I get it. Like, it's, there's a lot of riffraff there, too. Like, and get, I can get, I dig that hipster riffraff, to be specific, so. They're invading the Berkshires now. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That sounds like a really eclectic kind of area for that sort of thing, like an artistic area. Because you told me about the story with, who was it, James Taylor, I think, who was around there? Oh, genius, don't start. <laughs> don't, take, don't take this show. You're on your new platform into the James Taylor section. No, 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 I won't. I won't. I stop. But I got you. So I, I definitely want to check that out because it'll be like less effort. To, to travel there than to travel in Manhattan or Brooklyn. And or every town's got a great one. Yeah. So like you, you just just make, you reach out to the board people and the, whoever, the guy who's from White Plains and the guy who's from the Maranick and the guy who's from Peekskill and the guy who's from, you know, Yonkers will all have different spots and they'll all be good. They're all will be really good. Love it. And they'll take pride in their local one too, which is cool. Yeah. That and that's that's sort of the charm of it too. Like, there's definitely local pride involved in it, so it's pretty. Simple. And the service might not be good. Like, they might be, you know. Okay. I, I that's the other thing I love when I there's this bagel shop near my sister. She's in Fairfield, Connecticut, which is sort of like a extension of Westchester a little bit. Fairfield County has gotten to be that. It wasn't like that when I was a kid, but and there's a bagel place right off right from her right down the road. And I when I walked in the first time, and the guy was like a real dick, and I was just like. Oh, nice. I, I, I was taken aback because I was on the Cape for so long and I was doing those, running those markets and restaurants and it was all about service and blah, blah, blah. And the customer's always right and kiss my ass. But this guy was just like, I ordered like too slow and he just moved on to the next person. Ah. And I was like, what the <laughs> hell? And then I remembered and I'm like, oh yeah. And I, and you ended up liking it. You end up like getting in, involved and you're like, oh, that's it. And you up your game that. as a, you up your game as a, as a customer. I know I like, had to in, in Manhattan. Get your shit together, you know? And I like that. I like that. I like it. To, you know, believe it or not, I like that too. I love the efficiency because you understand. When you're in line and you're like someone's ordering slowly and you've got something to do, that can get... And they're, and they're bagels. It's like we're not... You know, right, we're not, right. There's not 75 different choices. <laughs> and you, That's and true. So. <laughs> That's a good point. <sighs> I love that. All right, let's get to our next question. Here it comes from... Who do we have? Okay, we have Mike's retirement tour again. He asks, if you could travel to the deepest depths of the oceans where no human has gone before or another planet where no human has gone before, where no human has gone before, wow, which would you choose? I feel like the ocean scares me less. Um, I feel like I'd be able to get out of that one if something went wrong i feel like people are getting close to getting to those trenches that we've yet to explore they're getting on these kind of like smaller man subs and i was reading about some to- like rich guy from houston who just bought this submarine company and they're just out in florida and he's there he's their goal is to just get to the you know the the lowest point at in every continent or in every ocean or whatever. So I feel like they're actually pretty close. The, the, 
the planet thing, I feel like something goes wrong when you're out there, you're done. You're just like floating around the atmosphere and you don't, maybe you don't even die and so you, but you're just floating around and you can't get back on the train or on the, on the path back home. So you have this weird existence where you're just floating around and you know, you're going to die. You just don't know when, whenever the black hole comes and sucks you around. So, although I know if something goes wrong at the bottom of the ocean, you're also screwed. Uh, but maybe you but feel like go... you have more control of the ocean. And yeah, I feel like, with it. yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I feel like I still uh, have some tons of things to explore on Earth. So before I go hitting any of the other stuff, you mm -hmm. leave that to the SpaceX people, and they can do that. I'll I'll take our own our own Earth and the water and stuff for now. Mm -hmm. it would be really cool. And on the way down too would be cool because you kind of be like, "What's up, yeah. whales? Like, what's going on, lobster?" I'm going down. I'll let you know what I find. <laughs> and you probably see like shipwrecks on the way down and tons of plastic garbage and Coke bottles and, and you know. And it's inevitable. Well, stuff that's a little more like relevant to right. my life where like some outlying, you know, you go to Uranus. I don't know what. Wait, where are we, we going? Where, where are we going? Where would we even go? <laughs> or is Pluto, is that even, does that count anymore? Wait, where did you say we were going right now? Mine? No, I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Um, Very good. And uh, this from No Label, he believes that the exit that you were talking about, your favorite exit, like the one where you're almost home, exit 35, he believes. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I just know that it was a right down because we were right down by the train station so mm -hmm. and the thing with the merit you can go on a couple different ones but yeah that milford stanford commute was not a, not my best idea yeah i got gotcha. you probably okay. contri mo contributed a little bit to the heart attacks yeah i'm not i don't blame it there I, I don't not i would not be surprised there either so next from lt on the board oh, wow. he asks that guy's still alive huh he Yes, he uh, yeah he is and uh, good for him. yeah that's a good question yeah but no he is still alive. Thank <laughs> well, it's not a good question because he's talking he, he's talking to us. We know it's <laughs> it's a dumb question. It's just me being a smartass. <laughs> that guy he's a great guy. I just haven't yeah. I don't go on the board so I don't I wouldn't even know what they're doing or what he's. Gotcha. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. I didn't pick up on the sarcasm uh, there. It was my fault. Uh, so he yeah, asked. It's sometimes it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> but when it, but if you um, if you're on the fence, usually just lean towards the sarcast. Like if you're like, I'm not really sure. Definitely you just go to this with you. Yeah. Definitely. It's just that's, the way I was. That's true. That's true. It's, and LT knows that. I'm he, sure he grew up in the same kind of neighborhood, probably as I did. No doubt. So he asks, "Does Kevin still do. make chowder? Do you? You give everybody a hard time. That's what we do. Um, I have recently. I don't do it on a regular basis." unfortunately and i don't know why that's a really good question because it's really um popular with my family and i do cook seafood all the time um it's probably the fact that back in the day it was very heavy cream based so with my current health situation heavy cream is sort of not frowned upon just like don't even bring that my wife would be like what are you doing you're just trying to kill yourself again um but every once in a while i do he would love this one um every summer we go back to the cape we rent a house near where where my mom lives and my sister my and her family my brother and his family and myself we rent a house and usually my cousins are rent a house like a in the other side of town and once every week we like designate like clam bake night and that's me like six in the morning like i'm in the kitchen the entire day doing just the chowder doing like a the steamers lobster all that stuff it's like this giant seafood just feast with lobsters clams i'm like shucking oysters and that we do that one night of the of the vacation and then that's when that's when my chowder 
game comes out. And so far it's, it's still good. Um, it's still solid. Holy cow. Look who's here. Yeah. You see that? You see that? Did somebody say clam? <laughs> oh yeah. Right on cue. <laughs> What boys? Welcome in, quickies. There's a couple of quickies. That is us. some sweet furniture, like gear you got behind I'm you. I'm at my mom's house, so this is like the, a, a former, a formal, proper. Uh, Are those Hummels? China closet. I don't know what's in here. I think there's some Hummels in there. There's Hummels. There's some puka beads. There's a little of everything in here. I see a couple hard drives. There's a. Uh... <laughs> of course, there's a hard drive. <laughs> what's on it is what I want to know. <laughs> That's a whole other podcast. Okay? <laughs> All right, fine. That'll bring up some not so random questions. <laughs> That's There's funny. A whole of limitations there. All right. Uh, so, folks, while I I wow. want to try something so I haven't is, done yet. Flotsam is in there. Okay, that's that's pretty Sky. wild. So, I'm going to try something I haven't done yet on this on this uh, new system. We're going to do this. Cast. You can't see now. Nobody on the stream can see this yet, but I, I'm about to attempt a three shot. Let's see what this looks like. Oh no! Oh. It doesn't look right. Ah, I thought it would be better than that. <laughs> That's way off. <laughs> way off. That was way off. That's way off. That's not even close. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that looks. That looks well, I need to well, hold on. Let me let me see if I can fix that. I can fix this though. The good thing is I can fix this. I'm I'm doing this the wrong way. It's supposed to be okay. Hold oh. on, Dave. You see... figure it out. I'm in. I'm in the heart of Yankee emotion right here. <laughs> <laughs> the oh. from the belly of the beast. So nobody can see anything right now. This is kind of hilarious. But Kevin has turned into a sandwich. <laughs> oh, here's what happened. That happens. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. It put Kevin on the left side. I thought that it would put him on the right. On the top. That's why it's all messed up. Okay, so then I'm not going to do that view tonight. I'll figure it out later. So basically what happened was, oh, so you can see over here. Like oh, there you there. go. Yeah. There's oh. something. That but works. Now you have like me and it's like Inception on the <laughs> little extra I know. Corner. Then we're inside another box <laughs> in another box. So that's kind of a mess. That's kind of it. See, the, what happened was I didn't know it was going to put me on the right side. I thought it was going to be put me on the right and the left side. That's why I'm a little confused. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix it this way. Okay, so check this out. So I'm going to do this. Uh, so you, you can see I'm going to move this guy over here and move this guy over here. This is supposed to happen before we go on the air, but it's okay. And then I'm going to – this will work. This will work because then I'm going to put me – I, I can do like a Larry King caller, Dave. You, you know, just hit me with – Larry King. Caller, you're on the air. Okay. Got that. Quick then, Brian, just, now we just Brian get... wants to know if Jim, if Jim is taking over the engineering yeah. <laughs> work on this. I, just so, I think I, 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 the YouTube We scenario. can get this. Folks, folks, I think Marquis' roommate is doing the visual here. Would you please? <laughs> oh my god. Did you catch all the, the, the did you catch all the nonsense with the uh... Here we are, you got it. There dude. we go. We got you know it. There we go. Boom. Kevin on oh. there. Quickie's on there. That's cool. That's super cool. So <laughs> let me rename you to a couple of quickies, by the way. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I... Yes, sir. I'm on my laptop. Nice. You, you're you coming in a grade on the laptop, too. Yeah, for sure. Good I'll stuff. see if it lasts because sometimes it's been conking out. It's funny you asked about how much would you spend on a desktop today. <laughs> I'm doing my research. <laughs> I loved your answer. It's you said $4,000. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so kev here's our... my random question what was the first how much did you spend on your first computer everybody Ooh, great question kev what do you think well at least a thousand dollars um i feel like they were really expensive um do you have any I don't, idea I'm, I'm trying to remember when i first bought one yeah when did you first get one that was my question because I was in college. We didn't have computers. I mean, we had computer. We had a computer lab on yeah, computer campus. Computer lab, yeah, multiple yeah. computer labs. And, and you had like the campus. You could email someone, but they had to have the campus .edu. You couldn't just randomly find people. Oh my gosh! I didn't. I know nothing about computers, and I was um, 
my college roommate though he um was something in the it early it of college so he got all of us jobs as computer lab basically assistants <laughs> nice so you got paid to do your homework and talk to girls and you know people would come up to you oh my god the powerpoint is frozen this is my <laughs> term paper what do i do and the answer was always the same I don't know. Just turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it back on, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, yeah. If it goes like, beyond, you work here though. Aren't you supposed to know something? And I'm like, you would think, but no. Yeah. I, uh, I'm I'm free riding here. <laughs> yeah, you would be logical to make that conclusion, but no. <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember there. Yeah. I have wrestling sites to look at. What are you guys bothering me for with your problems? Fuck your oh term. Oh my gosh. Yeah. When there's websites <laughs> and first. Oh my goodness! It was like, yeah, I had no idea. Just, I, I, I had a roommate same same, like... same same as you. I had a roommate who was like a computer whiz. I mean, that guy, uh, he ended up being like IT and getting IT jobs, and he's made a fortune somewhere. I don't know where he. Ended. I think he's in down south, but he was doing. He we we had an off, we had an off campus house, and he was he would like he'd mess with the TVs and he had the this you know the keyboards, and we're playing like Warcraft against like the neighbor like live yeah, and, and yeah. like back and i'm like yeah. how did how did that even what was the even, other game like, i didn't understand the, yeah how you could doom. do that remember doom that was like one of the first oh uh, doom was games. it man doom was fun and he's so like, like i i didn't know how to play doom but like people that knew in the lab so they take over the lab at night and they like have you know computer nerd party on a friday night and like yeah i'll be so wild computers like shooting each other so. <laughs> the noises yeah. from that game were unbelievable like ah, 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 ah. <laughs> remember that good shit that was that, that was pretty loud dave oh was that we have, we have, we have new audio for the next uh dave uh intro. yeah that, that might be really that that could be it right there <laughs> the, the, the david dactyl no no explanation just play that on the loop <laughs> love that no context, no context. Audio. yeah yep. just... i spent two thousand dollars on my first computer okay all right and i remember vividly because I was thinking about doing some video editing at that point, and the guy, it was a gateway, and the choice was 13 gig hard drive. Well, the Yankees scored. The Yankees have scored. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt my own story, which sucked anyway. What year was this when you bought this computer? This was uh, 1999. Wow. The, the only reason I remember it so vividly is I was talking to the guy, and he's like, He's like, well, the 13 gig is very popular. I'm like, you know what? Give me the 20 gig just to have it. And he's like, huh, 20 gig. You'll never fill that in your entire life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'm set. I guess I'll never right. get computer. That's funny. It's like insane, right? Like to think that was the men the mentality then? It did seem like that was insane. Oh, it's hard to believe Gateway went out of business with that kind of salesmanship. <laughs> <laughs> That guy was upselling. Well, I mean, when your computer looks like a cow, like you, man, you'd think that was, you think that shit had staying power. Stupid fucking concepts. It's like the Peter Lugers of computers. Oh, we were just talking about it. There's no remote marketing rationale to the fucking cow. I feel like though that that might have been the first one that I bought too. So it worked on both of us. Well, it was either that or like Comp USA you had to go to, and that was like yeah, I think it that was. That was like people that could have been in the Unabomber cabin working <laughs> at Comp USA. Just oh total, no, total psychopaths. Yeah, those are. I mean, I remember all the cool the goodies that they had there, but the people weren't the greatest. Fries is like miserable. Uh, fries just closed too last year, but man, customers. You guys, did you guys have fries in New Jersey and like Connecticut and all that? Because they were big over here. Not not in the tri-state, I don't think, but I okay. think I've seen them uh, more down south. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, those guys are miserable. I I gotta say, they just the worst customers for us. They didn't care. Like you go in and like, can can you help me with this? And they're like, okay. You know, you had to really drag them out of their. They had to really drag their feet. But uh, <clears throat> so two thousand dollars for you, Kevin. What was your first? What would you say? Um, what how much did you pay for your first computer? Uh, I guess in the I don't remember, Dave. Um, I would say probably like fifteen hundred bucks, thousand, fifteen hundred bucks. Okay. I don't know. It was probably nothing fancy. I probably 
went in there and the guy was like, what do you want it for? And I was, I don't know, games and stuff or, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It, I don't, I've never, this laptop, laptop I bought recently, basically you bought it. I mean, I just like asked you questions on what, which one, which oh, one. Oh, that's right. Get. I did help you with that. And I just, right. I just paid for it. I totally forgot about that. I did um, help you with that. I have, I, I, yeah, I'm very clueless when it comes to, even when, when Chris just said the thing about 20 gigs, I'm like, I I'm still not entirely sure what that is. <laughs> or, or what I would need, or I mean, I bought, I bought <laughs> on Dave's advice. Um, I bought a ex- external hard drive. Yeah, maybe like a month ago, because he was like, "Yeah, if you got, you're doing your interviews on Zoom, and you're gonna your your computer's gonna be really slow." So I was like, "Okay, great." So I bought it, and they say you literally just have to plug it in, and then the thing comes up, and you start dragging stuff in. I plugged it in, nothing happened. I took it out and plugged it in again. Nothing happened. I put it back in the box and I sent it back. <laughs> and really? Like, no, I'm not a computer person, nor do I have time to figure out why this is not working. I'm just sending this back. <laughs> That's my, my, uh, my, th- the way I work with these things. And that's I like mean, Zen in the art of motorcycle maintenance, right? Just some people want to ride the bike and some want to know how the bike works. And you know, it's, yeah. Well, even the I'm a rider. The, I don't give a shit how it works, but just yeah, yeah. Even the first the first computer that I got, the webcam was started you know weird, and I said this message to Dave, and he's like, just say, he's like, forget it. He's like, if it's already acting weird, it's gonna suck. Send it back, and then so I sent it back, and then I took his advice on the, which one I got, and it works. It's worked fine. Yeah, that's um, good. That's good. Yeah, if you if it's giving you problems in the first two weeks, it's a lemon. Like it's not even worth it at that point. So you did the right thing. Definitely. I'm watching us on YouTube, by the way, guys. It looks actually really good. Nice, <laughs> nice. There's seven people watching now. Wow. I'm actually I'm really impressed. Good job out of everybody tonight. That's, a, that's Brian really awesome. is asked and yeah, Mike's retirement tour, which I feel like that's a different name than someone I should know. It used to be it used to be Oh the Pain. He changed his name. Oh well, there you go. Mm-hmm. That's what and, that's where he came from. So, yeah, super cool. And there's a yeah, Digi 1980, which is means. About forty-one-year-old person usually, you know, but in the year they were born, I would guess. Yeah, their screen name typically. Is are there yeah. questions in there? Let me see. I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, did you 1980 wants to know Godfather one or two? <laughs> oh wow, a question. That's a good one. Quick, so I'm gonna give that to you first. Yeah, I have to give you. There's no. Yeah, Chris has to go first on that one. I, I well, funny enough, I just watched Godfather two for the first time in a long time. I've been watching the Godfather epic, which is the. Um, the whole movie in sequence. So you start in uh, Corleone and it's kind of the rise, the Robert De Niro bit. And then it becomes basically the Godfather. And then it's the the Tahoe and Cuba stuff from Godfather 2 on the back end with some extra scenes added in. So I hadn't actually watched 2 in a while. I think I can finally say I get Godfather 2 where you're seeing the magic of the contrast, because when I was growing up, everyone was like, Godfather 2 is better than Godfather 1. I'm like, you're fucking crazy. No Brando. But now I think I may be becoming a Godfather 2 person. But I really just consider them one long sequence, you know. Once you, you, you want to watch both together. So it's uh, you, you can't necessarily go wrong either way. In my I opinion. I don't think there's a wrong answer to that, because they, they've talked about how Godfather 2 is one of the first sequels that was as good or better than the original. And, you know, Empire was like just... Was that around the same time as Empire? No, I think that came out first, right? So... One of the first sequels, period. Yeah. Like, there's... They were more serialized movies where they would carry over characters. But, mm-hmm. like, in terms of... I think it's... It may be the first part, two of any... Yeah, yeah, that's good. You got something there. That's true. Of any film. I don't yeah. even... You're right. I don't remember there the being... The first time they added two to a movie, you know? Because, like, James Bond, there was always... It was just like another James Bond movie. Here's right, a right. It'd be like a different plot, right? So, that's interesting. You're, you're, you're kind of serialized. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that kind of gives birth to sequels. You're like, hey, it's a great fucking idea. Because it was a... Yeah, it was a big success at the box office. It was a great idea. Let's do this and nothing again for 50 years. Just keep <laughs> fucking... I know. Now it's like we can't go back. It's like all sequels. That's funny. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a new Mortal Kombat coming out. I'm I like, kind of oh. like the new Mortal Kombat. I'm kind of excited about it, like, to be honest. Well, like, I don't mind it, but I'm just like, 
I get it. I yeah. thought we said what we need to say in the last Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, reboot seems redundant. I agree. I, 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 I see that. But I would love to see the new vision of it. I think it'll be cool. I saw the new game, too. Like That, that was pretty cool. It's on Twitter. Yeah, are they still making the game? Yeah, they just redid the game. Like they did. With it. It's very nice. It's actually really cool to see it with like real video and like much better graphics. Like It's really interesting. It's like, Do they still have Raiden? I don't know. I don't and know. Can I just say Mike's face on Raiden? <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> Raiden. That's a good question. I, I, I'll have to go back and see if Raiden's in there. That's a good question. Good question. I mean, it's had like Sub-Zero. So some of the classics are up there. So, yeah. Um. Okay. So yeah, my first, just to throw this out there. I don't remember how much I paid in my first computer. I think that one I referenced from 2003 was my first computer. Like the one that I bought myself, because otherwise the other ones were like my dad bought it, sort of the family. But so the one I built, I guess it was like six. It was between six hundred and eight hundred bucks. That was in two thousand three. Wow. So you built a computer though. This yeah. is like a whole other level. Oh yeah, and then I can I can build them today. It's just that you know, and I don't have that kind of time anymore. I just don't want to. I could do it, but it's just that you know, it takes a lot of research and so on and whatever. But so I got a little lazy this time. I just bought it myself. But yeah, that's. That's what I do. I like. I you can do it. You just just as long as you you know as long as the parts work together, you can do it. Just a lot, you know. It takes some effort to toggle little stuff like that and whatever. So yeah, I I really enjoyed that. I was really I was in college at the time, so I was very proud of that computer. It lasted a long time. Like it went almost a decade. So I was really really happy with it. Uh, let's see. Oh, Kevin, one or two. What's your what's your preference? Well, I've never seen either of them. So, oh, you've not seen Godfather, Kevin. Never. That is that that is the breaking news, folks. That is a <laughs> I feel like it might be. Yeah, I think I've seen. I mean, I'm obviously aware of them. Um, mm. I and the sequel thing. Um, I was thinking about Meatballs one and two. That might, but I don't think that's as old. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know where it came. I think. Well, I never watched it growing up, and then it got to the point where. I was being told I needed to watch it or else like I didn't exist as a human. And I usually rebel against when people tell me to do, I, I'm, <laughs> I must do something. And then it became a thing that would annoy people so much. Like, especially my, you know, in your twenties, when you have like that group of friends, you always go to the bar with, or you hang out and then or watch movies or football and stuff. And it got, it became, it would annoy them so much that it was worth, I, I, I would, that I, I got to the point where I wanted to see them just because I, everyone says they're great and the book was amazing. And the actors are, have now are become the best actors we've had. And, uh, now it, 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 there was a point for like five years where I was like, it's just so much fun to annoy these people. <laughs> and now I feel a little like I should have at some point now, and now I'm sitting there like, I don't know when I'm going to find the time, but, uh, maybe I'll just wait hey, and just watch seen- it, with, watch it with the kids. Dave, have you seen them? I haven't seen two at all. I've seen parts of one. I mean, this this That's... is a whole podcast. You two watching the goddamn Godfather. I know. I know. We owe it to ourselves. We definitely do. Could, this could be an eight part mini 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 did cow fest. <laughs> no, you're right. Hour by hour, hour by hour, your little breakdown and takedown of uh, the Godfather. I used to be. It so... would be interesting. So you you did was that your answer? You did not watch it, Dave. You no, basically, it? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it in full. Like I've seen like. You know, I've seen it for a and little you're bit, like 40, on AMC, but right? the whole thing. What was that? You're almost 40, yeah. right? So, and I'm almost, I'm not going to say 50, but I did, my wife did call me in my mid-40s the other day, or late 40s. Some was very annoying. <laughs> but two of the people this age, to get this far and not have watched it, I think that Chris is onto something. That is, that is Well, it's a bad job somewhat... out of us is what it is. Like, I think. Well, we've freely confused. admitted that. I mean. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, on the list of bad jobs out of me, that's like way down. <laughs> that's a fair point. That's not, yeah, that's not something I'm, I'm right. that's not what keeps me up at night. Trust me. <laughs> There's other things that happen. Why didn't I watch Godfather one? <laughs> I mean, you could do like, a, uh, I don't know. You could, I, we could watch it. Or I don't know. You can't, watching it on the podcast would be that would be boring. I think I don't know. Maybe I don't know. No, but people. think of it like a whole sidebar podcast, like catching up on classic movies. 
movies I should have seen or something like that. You know? Yeah, like how did I miss this one? Yeah, or right. um, it's a good one. Yeah, there are. Well, Chris, what we, I mean, there's probably like I don't know a handful of movies, right? That you would say like everyone says you have to see. You know, uh, well, yes, but there's I'm some by. that you, if you like I mean, a certain genre, that you you see. But if you don't like comedy, it's like okay, you can you can kind of give someone a pass if they're not a comedy fan if they didn't see Caddyshack. But if they are a comedy fan, and they didn't see it. You'd be like, you're at, what are you what are you doing? Um, comedy is very tricky. It's so generational. I think drama definitely holds up better than comedy sometimes because yeah, you know. So yeah. this, Dave, this could not, would not, cannot be at all remotely sound or look like the rewatchables. That's a very good request. Are you familiar with the rewatchables, uh, quicks? No, like what the is that? Podca- it's a podcast on the ringer network where they review okay. movies. It's, it's a Bill Simmons project. Mm-hmm. Bill Simmons joint. And what's their scenario? They go back and look at. They, movies. they, they've got, he's got a couple of guys and a couple of ladies that work for him at the ringer and i mean they're just their their theory is like those movies that when you're at home and you're flipping around right and you and you find it you have to you you like oh this feel the dreams is on exactly how i watched godfather 2 the other night i was yeah it's like walking through the living room or through the den and i saw it and i said let me watch this scene and four hours later, I've watched the fucking movie, and I'm watching Godfather three till three in the morning. Wow. Yeah, it would be like you know, like oh, I know the more uh, the James Earl Jones speech is coming on, I feel the dreams, and you just sit in, and then you watch the rest of the movie. So, yeah. And I think they started out like that, and now it's gotten a little more. They do a lot other movies um, that maybe aren't as rewatchable because I think it's a really popular podcast. They've done like 200 episodes now. Um, yeah, but it, but it's cool in the sense you could just pick the ones you want to like. Yeah. Like they did um, Butch Butch and Sundance with Aaron Sorkin. So I was like, oh, this is phenomenal. Well, the great thing for you guys, if when you watch these movies, you're going to just, it's going to be like a light turning on for you. You're like, oh, that's where that comes from. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I'm sure you know many of them already, but there's going to be so much more where it's like, oh. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like we probably know those quotes and haven't seen the movie. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know where I don't know where they come along in the. I know they're in the movie. I just don't know what scene like, or what. I, I haven't read the whole Bible, but it's like when you actually start reading a little of the Bible, like there's so much stuff. You're like, oh, that's what people were. That's what they mean by this. Right. That's why everyone's so angry and confused. <laughs> <laughs> but even no, not even that. Just like casual aside, like sayings or references. Oh, oh, yeah. That's, same. With oh, yeah. Like if you go back and read Shakespeare, you're like, oh, that's where that. You know. Like, oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think. For years in, in song, like people have referred to Cain and Abel in, in song yes, for, exactly. for years. And then all of a sudden you read the story and you're like, oh, I get it. Excellent. Yeah, it makes totally sense. Yeah. Yep. Case in point. Yes. Beautiful. Okay, guys, questions. I have questions. We are doing great with the with the, uh, with the the viewership tonight. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for watching. They might be onto something here. Yeah, this is this is working. I promote the show a little bit and suddenly we get an audience. This is what what a awesome. concept. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, here we go. So first, a comment on the on the computer. So Mike's retirement tour said that he, his dad spent three thousand dollars on a four eighty six in nineteen ninety three, and I think that's completely believable. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is a salvo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a different time. I mean, that's that's how much those things cost. Like when Pentium came out, we actually would have spent like four thousand dollars back on, on it back in the, those days. You know what I don't get? Fucking an Atari game in 1982 was fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and the game in 1987 was fifty dollars. And the fucking game in '93 was fifty dollars. I don't Chris, understand. Do the this? last you... thing I played was PS2. They were fifty dollars for like a fucking Madden game or something. Like, Chris, have you watched the um, blockbuster the documentary? I haven't. Like, no, I've, I've been hearing a little about it. I do you try. remember? I I only watched the first twenty minutes, and they kind of they lost me at some point. But the do you remember? They they talk about the early video rentals were like. 80 90 bucks no i have no recollection of that so, so yeah they, they, yeah i think well I the videos the were the videos started. were yeah because yeah, before the videos. they oh the actual cassettes yeah the cassettes used to yeah. cost like 90 yeah, bucks that to, really to, that's why people rent rented them, they wanted was, a was rental fortune. um they wanted a rental market so they priced the tapes really high you're right they, they like and the theory was they had some executive you know like t- you know a ticket at the time was seven dollars to the movies and you can have 10 people over your house to watch this movie. So yeah. why wouldn't we charge you some? And 
You know what's crazy? Like, remember the early days of video stores? Like, there was just one Return of the Jedi, let's say. Yeah. Like, until like, Blockbuster's like, you know, we should put, like, 50 of these out on the shelf so people can rent, like... They, I, I watched it enough to get into that, and they talk about how Blockbuster made, like, these deals with the studios yeah. to get all yeah. those 100 copies of this, where... And that's how they ran everybody out of business because mom and pop had two copies of the new of the new release i grew up i grew up in tony soprano country so i knew at least a couple people where they had like what we would consider normal now or maybe not even normal because everything's streaming but for you know remember like dvds were big in the early 2000s people will like would for some reason they were buying movies that was another great psychological flip like they're like, why am I renting a movie for five dollars and I can buy it for fourteen and watch right. it once? And not watch it ever again. I remember but, those days. Yeah. And I, I knew, had I knew and like had... kind of these, uh, you know, friends of ours, these Godfather two types that had closets full of these ninety dollars movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, you're just like doing the math in your head. You're like, this shelf has fucking fifty movies on it, a ninety yeah. bucks a clip. Um, yeah. And every time you move, you got to take all these boxes with you, and you never watch them again. Yeah. And these are like VHSs too. Like they're Ooh. worth. That is so <laughs> hysterical. So, um, but let let me. I didn't get to the question. <laughs> the question is: um, Have you ever ordered decaf coffee and gotten caffeinated coffee by mistake? So, um, Kev, I'll go to you first. First of all, have you? When was the last time you had coffee? I guess is the first question from me. Um, but then, has that ever happened to you, Kev? No, I don't think so. Not that I can recall. Yeah. Um, and I haven't had coffee either in quite a long time. Okay. Uh, probably, I definitely had some after the heart surgery, um, but I tried, I slowly weaned myself off caffeine just for the sake of trying to give the, the ticker a, a fighting chance. Yeah, yeah. Um, even though, you know, there are studies that say it's good for you. Um, but yeah, I remember going to, but I have, ha- but I did have decaf for like a good year after just to kind of wean myself off. I would take these walks and I would go to an ice cream shop in our neighborhood and just get coffee. It was sort of like tempting myself and my, my personal willpower. And then I would walk around the neighborhood. Um, but I don't remember ever getting the, the wrong one. Mm. I think I go to a lot of those places. I was go to those other places where you would make it yourself. Now that became a thing. They would just have like the pods out there, but I guess technically they could have put it in the wrong one. But no, I don't. I I don't remember ever going like. But I'm also not a really excitable person. So if I had gotten the regular, I probably just would have been like, oh, I, I'm gonna stay up and watch another episode of Breaking Bad. Like yeah, and then went to you know, <laughs> probably all that happened. Got it. And I I don't. You order decaf that often anyway, so I think it. I don't think it's ever. Really, I don't remember it happening, but. Maybe it did. I just forgot. It's just because I, I mean, I might order decaf like once a year. So, uh, Quicks, how about you? I've never intentionally gotten decaf anything. Yeah. It's always been incidental or. Yeah. Fake. So I, I never had the flip side of it. I did used to love coffee with cigars. So, like, if I was having one late at night, I would, or at a restaurant, like when we would go down to. Little Italy or something, I would order decaf um, with it if it was very late. But I feel like really... if I went decaf at this point, it'd be like the cartoon where the guy runs off a cliff and his legs are still going. <laughs> it's like he realizes he has decaf and he just plummets. That would be the. <laughs> I think I'm just held together with caffeine. Yeah, I was for a while for sure. Super cool. Um, Boy, I'm getting some love from another channel, as it turns out. I, I, I'll tell you more about that in a moment, but first, let's get to the next question. Multiple channels. Hey, with a tease. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I wonder if I can do this. I think I Mike can. Mike Greenberg, Medina. Yeah. <laughs> tease. <laughs> wow. Oh, this that's better be good. good. That's good. Um, all right. Let me see. I don't know how that's going to come through in my mixer, though, if I attempt that, so I guess I won't do it now. Ooh. But... I don't know how else I do it. I'd have to plug in my phone to the thing. Nah, it's a mess. Oh, I don't think I... Don't be is, plugging stuff in now. Is, We're on a roll. It's too late now. We really are on a roll. Let's get to the next question. Okay, here we go. Um, next. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, he, uh, somebody asked, is this the show for sport or for food? That has to be SJR. 
Derek on the <laughs> chat. That has to be his JR. Just I, I answered him. I said whatever you want, man. Yeah. Good. Oh yeah, you did write you did write that in there. Okay. Um Sport, food. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not women though with this crowd. Don't don't ask our advice on that. Um, but food, sports, movies, not Godfather. The latest well, question is I've seen Godfather one and two. It's from Mike's retirement tour. Is three worth it to watch just to be in the conversation? And I think you asked I think you answered that one, right? Right, Quicks? You basically said yeah. So the release now it's called the Godfather Coda, which is a recut version mm -hmm. of this is like the new jam, right? We've had Zack Snyder's Justice League, and they're recutting all these old fucking movies. Um, Who is recutting them? I believe Coppola supervised this, so we had a little hand in it. So, okay. um, Godfather 3 is, don't get me started, guys. It's like it's a whole, you know, <laughs> it was so close. It, like, there's some decent ideas in it, but um, no, uh, so they rushed it out they wanted to get out for like christmas 1990 and uh always knowing and they rushed it and it just you know a lot of incomplete parts going on in there so i would say watch the godfather coda it's a much tighter easier watch the original godfather 3 is just it feels like you're uh sprinting through a swamp I didn't even know there was an alternate version of those. That's that's very interesting. It just it just came out this year. So oh, okay. Kind of, okay. That's what got me watching till three in the morning the other night because I'd never seen it and I'm like, oh, this actually <laughs> that is that it works a lot better. So that's pretty wild. Yeah. The, mag okay. the magic of editing. No, no doubt. Um, okay, so I'm gonna attempt this. So the channel I reference is the piano dueling piano channel that I've been on. Now, you guys know my by, by my nickname? Like, I mean, obviously Dave. You know Dave, but my full name is Dave. Dave is his nickname for David? Yes. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I think we, yeah, we got that part. Yeah. Um, and then, but my family called me Davey because when I was young, I was a baby. They used to call me, let's see if you have any. I, I hope I'm they gonna, play I'm the song try. from the Sting. I would have had the corns are definitely the, the entertainer. Best the entertainer. Right? <laughs> Where is it? Oh, right here. <laughs> Yeah, there, that's there we go. Now we're dueling. I love that. Oh, the Sting's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I have no musical ability whatsoever, but. Oh, random question for you, Junk. I've wondered this for the longest time. Do you sing? Because I think you sing to your kid, your your son. But are you have you are you do you sing along to songs at all? Like when they're on the radio. It's like, oh well, yeah, well, no. What do you mean? Do I sing? I'm a horrible singer. I have a horrible singing voice. I guess mm -hmm. is is that your question? That doesn't stop some people though. <laughs> no, I would no. I would never sing to. I would never put people in that. Uh, I would never put them in that position to have to listen to me do that. Okay. Um, but yes, my son does listen to me sing. So far, the six week old is not so keen on it. But she's not really a fan of me yet. We're we're still working. We're still trying to figure each other out. Mm -hmm. She's kind of stuck to her mother's chest, which yeah. is understandable. But, but yes, Cody is a big fan of. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's not a big fan because I sing and put him to sleep. So he's like, "How many times do I have to hear you sing Mission in the Rain, Dad?" Jerry Garcia band was not that vital in my <laughs> my life, and I'm like, "Well, although he does, he's he's taken a huge liking um, of the band, so he'll." He'll come down and he'll request like the shape I'm in or Ophelia or these, and he can now, which that he probably is a really does. tremendous job out of you. Yeah, that, thank you. I think I feel like I'm finally doing something right in my life. It took me forty something years, but he'll. I don't think he knows by sound, but he'll. He just he has a, his memory. He'll say like, I'll say who is that? Because you know the band had all the different you know had three singers, and he'll go, that's Richard. Or he'll go, that's Rick, or that's Levon. And nine out of ten times, he's right. This is Doogie Hauser shit. Junk. So uh, it's really okay. exciting. And and he'll say, and there's a, a I put on a Levon Helm, uh, a, a Levon Helm band version the other day um, from like, the, you know, 2007. And the the Brian Mitchell, who was his guitar, as a keyboard player, then he does the shape I'm in, obviously, because Richard Manuel yeah. had been dead. And Cody goes, that's not Richard. Interesting. And I was like, nice. <laughs> you know? Now, so did you that, ever go up to Levon's Barm? I had, yes, I did. Yeah, awesome. That was, 
back when I was in the newspaper and a, f- a friend of mine who was uh, a musician and who actually had known some of the people who played it with them. So, I mean, we, not like you needed, you didn't need to know someone to get in there. It was they, you know, buy tickets, but we were, we went before it blew up when mm-hmm. it got to be really expensive. It was, I think at one point it got to, it was up in the early 2000s. It was like 150 bucks to go up. Yeah, there, I but, can imagine. Absolutely. But we, it, we, I think it was like 75 bucks and they, they asked you to bring, bring something like food yeah, or, for the table. or yeah for the yeah and i think maybe we went dave this was we... Levon helm from the band he had a, he, he, oh yeah no i totally right he died and i was really sad when he died yeah i love the band you'd sit in his, you'd sit in his barn basically mm-hmm. that was kind of converted and you know tricked out a little bit yeah and, and i always um he'd be playing it'd be like he's playing music in his living room for yeah. you know? <laughs> like you'd literally like be like what do you want to hear yeah and you're sitting there and i was a i became a was always a dylan fan obviously i think you guys know that but the the band it was cool i mean it was a really cool thing it got to a point where i would always ask for the same song and I, we gone a bunch of times so like at one point he looked at me and he was like you want to hear it again and i'm like yeah because i for some reason i would have loved he, there's a song going back to memphis which i don't even think is a band song but i just love the way he sung it and uh the last time we went, I didn't even have to ask him. He just played it. It was cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I missed the the later years where like Larry Campbell showed up and like yeah, that they awesome. elevated to the point where like people were, you know, they redid the barn and they made it a recording studio and the Black Crows recorded that one album there and Elvis Costello would show up and all. It got to be the thing, this thing where you would hear later like who the, the surprise guest this week was mm-hmm. this month was Elvis Costello or somebody like that or Alan Tucson or something and like oh back then like I didn't know any of the other people they were just like local yeah. Woodstock people because even Rick Rick had died so he wasn't he wasn't around and I think he died in 99 so he I don't even know if he made any of those those shows I think Rick he might have died earlier I can't remember I met Rick once oh, I think it was right around then yeah I met Rick once in New Paltz at a bar where he where he was playing uh, when I was in college um, but he was he was he was what you would imagine. He was high on something, but he played <laughs> he played till after after closing time. He was unbelievable. Same kind of thing. He was just like what else? he played everything he knew, and he was like, "What else you want to hear?" You know, he just <laughs> played Dylan songs. He played. He was just and I'm uh yeah. You didn't know if he was going to pass out or play another song. Can I come sleep on your couch? Yeah, pretty much. Nice. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, that's a great story, Kev. I, I got to rewind my the podcast later and we listened to it. I was just looking at some other scenario, technical scenarios while you were talking about that. That's super cool, though. Um, no, but, I think the whole point of the story is that Cody can distinguish between the three singers of the band. Which that that's, is very that's cool. That's gold. Yeah. At two and a half. No, he's not even two and a half. Do we, no. do we go to the favorite band song? I will do that. What's your favorite song from the band? Wow, you guys are silenced. Ooh. I thought you'd well, have I was, one. I was waiting. I, 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 uh, well, I can change, but I'm going to go with Ophelia. Okay, for, for good one. Good one. There's two. Mine is going to be an obvious choice, but I mean, I love so many of the weird of of the ones. You know, I'm going to guess it's not I'll, the I'll, weight. No, it is the weight. It because, is the weight. Oh, well, that, I, well that's that's, wow. that's going to be my answer because there's there's two songs in my life that if they're if they come on at any point i have to i literally like well i just have to i just kind of stop and either like sit down or like we could be doing something in the house with the kids and if these if either of these two songs come on whatever we're doing has to wait until they're over and the wait is one of those songs so I, if the fact that it's that important to me i can't it has to be my favorite band song even though i love so many of them and um so yeah, I mean, and that's and that's like what everyone would probably would say, but for some reason, and I don't, I haven't actually been able to articulate why. But that song hits me, very, hits me like yeah. no, I'm, almost I'm no being very cute to get away from the weight. It's hard to dispute. You know, it's clearly it's one of the greatest songs ever. So the same, yeah. not your number one band song is, you know, like I said, I'm being a. You know, it is. Being yeah, a normally I would pro- pick something else because that's just I'm like Chris. I like you know I would like to not pick the the answer that everybody goes with yeah um but uh, and i yeah i think go wrong with it 
it's probably a, even a larger conversation of like, what's your favorite Levon Rick or Rich or Richard song? You know, people who really like the band could go into that because uh, I feel like the weight is a, uh, and it probably because of the the chorus with the and 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 you know, like it, to me, I love that part because it feels like the whole band is like got each other's back. Mm-hmm. I love I love stuff like that. Um, uh, so it feels like that one's a, one of all five of them together. Where you know some of these and other. What ones... What do you see in your head when you hear the weight? What do I? What was that? You have a visual in your head when you hear the weight. Um it's of the visual in my head is usually of like a me like anybody either either me or or the the band themselves or either even other people or just like a, a group of friends that kind of have done some stuff together and you know there's people in your life that uh either you don't see for a while or you do see for a while, but you don't even have to explain to them a situation and they have your back or they have, yeah. they're like, they're, you need them for something. And they, they're just, they don't even ask questions. Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Or you got it. it. For some reason to me, it's like a, come on, like a brotherhood, that song. See, I go the other way. I can definitely hear those feelings, but I go right to easy rider, the fucking bikes rolling rolling through the wood because that's the first time i really heard the song yeah that's so true like, that's where i remember the song too that that was a big yeah, part of that movie. Shake that yeah. visual out of my head where it's just like, and it's really got nothing to do with that right like the yeah guys <laughs> the it's but it's so, cool that like, yeah yeah but, but now like, you yeah. on your brain, right? where it's, and it's yeah. interesting yeah and there's a lot more i feel like the last three or four years it's the, so funny music attaches to things like whether it's places or sounds or smell like it's like well like the, uh, i think the weight is in the big chill too so people could probably oh i forgot that too yeah um yeah. Yep. think of think of it that way or they could think of the last waltz or something and i feel like the last three or four years the band has gotten a little bump with like see that fucking I, they, big chill like ruined the heard it through the grapevine for me yeah that's like what a great song but it's like it's it is boilerplate big show i don't hate the big show that much but like <laughs> did you not have a great song like that tied to do you hear do you ever watch high fidelity you i'm sure you i have not and it, and they're like they're talking about like best best songs about death and they're like uh and cusack's like you can't always get what you want and jack black's like that's completely disallowed for its involvement in the big chill. And they're like, Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. <laughs> so the big chill, I hurt some songs, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was funny. I was just talking about the big chill the other day with my father-in-law. Pretty fun. Big chill song in my head is, uh, what's no, oh, ain't too proud to beg. Ain't too proud to beg. That's a- and it's Glenn close shaking her MWO ass in the fucking Ooh. kitchen. In yeah, the that's like, legit. I'm like, what kind of Dockers yuppie hell is this that these fucking people are <laughs> cleaning the kitchen to this? Oh, and it's yeah. Like Kevin Klein is just grooving the fucking yep. yeah. And I'm just wondering, and I, I I I can see that scene in my head and wondering, like, is William Hurt really high or is he just good at playing <laughs> someone that's always high? Because he was so, he. It worked. Me, he was. You the, just hate it. You fucking hate that you fucking were watching it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, sorry to interrupt this, but uh, we have ne- our next question from Timmy Rousseau from the board. He asks, "Wow, completely different question. Beyond impossible or amazing burgers? This is probably a junky question. What do you, what do you say?" Um, the okay, I don't. I've never had an amazing burger. That must mm-hmm. be a new one. Mm-hmm. Um, the impossible burger is phenomenal. I've had that many times. Uh, the Beyond Burger, I don't know if I've liked the burgers much. I've had their, they, I think they have a sausage one, which is really good. Um, but it is phenomenal how good those are. I know a lot of people are, you know, you have to load it up with your sauce and all the stuff you regularly put a burger on. But they've they've come a long way in that sort of meat substitute world I agree. Um, and you see the impossible burger in a lot of places now yeah it's so. becoming mainstream almost right in a way yeah yeah all right quick man how would you tackle that one 
I've not had either of these products, but I have. <laughs> uh, there's a restaurant. Do you guys know? It's like a smaller chain. It's kind of like high end, swanky. Uh, take your bumble date there, date night. Um, um, wait, hold on. I'm watching on YouTube. I'm, I'm getting feedback, Jim. Uh, no, a, a restaurant <laughs> called Houston's. Have you guys ever heard of this? Oh, Houston's. No. I love Houston's. Yeah. So they have a veggie burger there which will fucking curl your goddamn hair. It is so, you know, I never thought I'd be a veggie, veggie type of person, but like I was going out with a vegetarian for a while. So like we would go there and get that veggie burger and it is fucking phenomenal. So I don't know what that nice. is, you know, how they do it, but it's, it's amazing. You would, if you, you were served it cold, you would truly never know it was a veggie burger. I'm kind of That's wondering awesome. if they were just trolling the whole time and just being like, yeah, it's veggie. Do you remember what the main, like, ingredient was was it no, mushrooms no or i just know it was huh. and it had the look and consistency of a burger so much so it was probably just an actual burger and they were fucking no wonder they were selling it <laughs> yeah i wonder well They're i like, mean yeah, i've had a ton of veggie burgers and the ones that are uh, the ones i like the best are always the ones that are like mushroom based the ones that are like bean based i don't really a fan of them um chickpeas even uh, but yeah the mushroom i've had some good mushroom ones uh for the most part yeah i've had the beyond burger myself i've had bean burgers and i like them both they're both pretty solid i think i think i dra i drug drag dave to a, a vegan place yeah in we anaheim were, i think we were was, in anaheim yeah. yeah he was like what is this he's like did they, they spelled chicken wrong and i'm like no that's the whole idea it's... <laughs> i think i've been to that place before though i think i was there before it was that like right near where the uh ducks practice yeah right, i think yeah well they no it's actually uh something like that yeah and I do remember the chicken burger, or ch is it? Wait, well, here's a great question: Is that a chicken burger or chicken sandwich? I think it was chicken burger, right? Do you remember? I'm not sure that's a great question, but I mean, it's a question. <laughs> Depending on time of day and who it is and what channel, it could be a great question. But true. But in this context, probably not the greatest question. But nevertheless, yeah, it was great. Whatever it was, it was really great. I agree with you, Kev. It was. You couldn't even tell the difference. Like I didn't even know. It helped it was... that they, I think they like loaded it with buffalo sauce or something, right? Yeah, but still, like I, I was like, oh, you, you, you're telling me this is not real meat? I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is really convincing. I think what happened with with the world too is like the regular meat with what was going on is not so much real meat anymore either. Uh... <laughs> like when we were younger, it was somewhat. You know, we all had like butcher shops since it existed back then and stuff and now it's like the competition it's a little more even because you're like mm. is this even really chicken in some of these places mm. like actual chicken you know it's like uh kramer with uh he's like these are sweatshop eggs <laughs> you know farm fresh that's the way to go these are disgusting he's ahead of his time wasn't he look at that yeah he was ahead of his time for sure well larry david was yeah yeah fair fair yeah he's a brilliant guy no, absolutely um okay so let's see next up we have um question from john in georgia what is your favorite oh, wow. one hit wonder song and i'm gonna challenge you on that if you say it's a one hit wonder and i remember that they had another hit i will i will call you out but uh uh quick so i'll go to you first favorite one hit wonder um 96 tears question ah! mark. wait who sang it Question mark and the Mysterios. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. No, that's a one-hit wonder. <laughs> I'm not, is, there's no debating that one. That that's that's video. That's a fun song for sure. Okay. Phenomenal. It's like mm -hmm. you heard that band, you're like, God, oh, these guys are on the way. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> it's like it's like hey, Sue Spontero coming up, fucking hitting two homers in the first two games. Sorry, this is fucking this is the Hall of Fame. This shit's fucking on. I remember, I remember that guy. <laughs> and then oh, next thing you know, he's fucking washing cars in fucking Seattle. Ah. <laughs> too bad poor guy poor, poor guy. guy he's probably working in the sheets <laughs> oh the sheets oh yeah that's <laughs> solid oh my god yeah much like question mark is loves <laughs> i tell you what though question mark, question mark and go show up at a county fair and fucking sing that song and get paid too oh there you go. dude i saw when i was working at playland when i was like 20 the who, the bay city rollers <laughs> and like it was a bunch of old ladies just waiting for him to play that Saturday night song. And I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. They went crazy. Yeah. Good pull yeah. there. That's not yours though, right? That's just like one of them. 
Oh yeah, no, no, no. Um, I, what, the f- that's a uh, one hit. My favorite would be. I don't know. Dave, you go first. Well, this is tough for me because, like, I'm. I mean, there's definitely one hit wonders I'm a fan of, but I'm just trying to. I'm being a little bit Captain Nofa. I'm like, well, did they do another song in there that I forgot about? I was like, I don't. Yeah, you're being a little too strict now. It's 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 we're we're at past ten thirty on the east. You can not be as strict. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think. What could be? Um, because I'm thinking of like Macarena. I'm thinking of like. <laughs> oh no. No, that's not it. That's not it. I'm just just thinking. Well, like, where where does El Debarge fall on? Oh, Debar- no, they had Ooh. a few hits. Like Rhythm maybe three. Night. They had uh, they had a couple, and then they had Rhythm of the Night, which everybody knows. So that's not that wouldn't qualify. Um, oh man, the, the, these questions are. I'm, I'm I just went on the you the the YouTube. Listen to me, Jesus. Yeah. Um, are even getting better. I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't know where all these people showed up from? Um, this is the, exciting. Well, anyway, these guys, um, I think I think I put it on the board, and I think finally we got some juice. Like that. They, they they all left the dueling panel, dueling pianos Discord. <laughs> there actually is a dueling pianos Discord. It's true. It's actually great. Um, but but uh, but no, I I guess I better answer this damn question. Okay, so. Uh, well, I think this would be your kind of question, Dave. You I know it's just funny; like it's not coming to me. Like I, I would think I'd have this nailed, and I just don't for whatever reason. Like you know that song that came out, like oh oh, it's magic. You know, is that is that a one head wonder? Oh, I don't know oh, who did it. It's magic. I think it was our. Uh, was it Arjun? What about fucking come on, Eileen? There's a fucking. Oh, there movie. you go. There what you the go. Dexy's that? Midnight Runners. That's absolutely it. That's absolutely it. That's a great song. Because you'd never heard anything else they've done. Like, what was the second song? Like, does anybody know the second song? Nobody knows there the second even, song. There wasn't even an attempt. Did they even record a second song? Like, it's just like, everybody did. Like, Come on, Eileen. But then the other song's like, yeah. They gave, they gave them 5,000 bucks and repossessed their fucking overalls. <laughs> <laughs> and the brooms. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's the one. Thank you for help, your help on that one. I, I was struggling. They, they, they can sell out a fucking teacup. No one's coming out to see <laughs> Oh no! So they'd be like puppet show and Dexy's Midnight Runners on the marquee or something like that. <laughs> they couldn't sell out the Wolf Den. Oh, that's funny. A free show in a casino. All I right. think there was a guy. I'm not sure. There was a guy. Maybe Chris knows this. He was like a singer, but he went. We, he went on like Beverly Hills 90210, and he had like one one song. How do you was, talk? Yeah. You an angel. That's it. That's my pick. Oh, yeah. That was definitely one in one material. Oh, was that The Heights or was that the name of the show? No, that was the name of the show. I How do you feel talk like to that was the like name of Warren the band? Or some stupid name like that. Like, you know. No, Jamie I feel Kenta? Jamie Walters, maybe. Jamie Walters. I think that's it. Yes. So, because that it was like from the Heights. I, sort Quicks of a song right. from the Heights. that I could go with. There was a guy with a guitar. It wasn't like. Uh, yeah. The Macarena, what Dave's talking about. <laughs> weird, weird, weird it was the there. heights, though. You you got the the band right, like, quick man. Good job out of you. Do you, do you put Blind Melon No Rain as a one? No, I don't think but so. I'm just a... well, what's the second hit? Well, I mean, I I know they have. I fucking one. love Blind Melon, but they may be a one hit wonder. Yeah, yeah you're right. Sing. I mean, just sing. That's a great fucking tune. If that's your one tune. Yeah, I yeah I know I love. Uh, that song change and i know that they're not they weren't hits though uh mm. and they got obviously they... as close as you get those change exactly yeah okay it was a single oh. but great song but yeah i mean I, I was like well we were what like 17 and the first line is like i don't feel like coming out today the song doesn't feel like coming out today i'm like oh this guy this guy's talking to me life sucks like we're 20 you know 19 that little whatever. girl who looked like mike fucking ruined it fucking <laughs> dumb video just a b-girl <laughs> That's fun. <clears throat> All right, guys, here comes the next question. I want to stay on music, so we're going to jump ahead a little bit. Uh, for Mike's retirement tour, what is the worst band name for a really good band, a really good, famous band, the worst band name of a well-known, good, famous band? And I have an answer to this one, but uh, who wants to tackle that first? Go ahead. What is it, Dave? Oh, you want me? Okay. Uh, well, you said you have one. The worst band worst name. Worst band name. That's a really good question. It really is. Like, yeah, definitely. You, you think of these guys or these girl or these girls in their in their garage, and they just throwing out names 
Yeah. Some well, probably I'm gonna not give thinking you... they'll ever be famous. Yeah. Here's one. You two. I think it's a stupid name. There. <laughs> <laughs> I think Yoko Ono is a dumb name. I mean, wait. <laughs> That's her name, though. That's the difference. Yeah. I got that was a, Yeah. That was my joke. <laughs> I just got it. <laughs> All right, guys. How about the rest of you? Stick. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. Yeah. I feel like they would have gone further without the fucking stupid name and spell. Even the name by if it was just sticks spelled properly. Well, S T Y S. There's a reason that's called that, but there's a reason for that. It's actually the river sticks in hell. In hell, that's what it's named after. With that weird spelling. Yeah, that's actually what it's called. It's called the river sticks. Fair point. Fair point. Call it the river sticks then. That's a fucking better band name. That would be a better name. Yeah, that would be a better name. I feel like, um, yeah, there, there's a lot, man. Well, the the question was though, what's they have to be a good band? What's the well, worst band name? A famous really band. Good band. They don't so, like, I was gonna have say, to I, I got another one. I guess, Hot Tuna. What was it? Hot Tuna. They're actually a pretty good band. Oh yeah, Hot Tuna. Yeah, that is a dumb the name. Funny. Yeah, that, like, <laughs> yeah. There's a few bands. You mean, you a terrible it, name. Yeah. There's weird, like, there's kind of those, and then the jam bands sometimes have really dumb names because well, they fish. guys are all I'm sorry, totally I'm sorry, fish high and I'm like, sorry, like the String Treat Cheese Incident. It's just a totally stupid name, and they're not famous. But if you go, you could go to that show and be like, oh, that's kind of cool. And they have some cool melodies. But and then there's that whole faction of like you can't even describe the show to people when you saw it it's no too many words i saw the string cheese i saw the yonder mountain string band go fuck yourself <laughs> right <laughs> yeah kiss my ass <laughs> whiskey treaty something or uh but then there was that whole like although one band from that era i do like deep banana blackout oh <laughs> That's that, 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 that kind of goes with what I was. What? That that just goes with what I was just saying. These people who I think there were kids who tried to name so, something like some kind of sexual frustration. So there was like Limp Biscuit, like <laughs> what or Butthole Surfers, like really? Like what are we doing? Well, that was the late '90s where everything had to have a Z wherever it could be incorporated. So didn't Limp Biscuit have a, like yeah Biscuit or something? And there yeah, and there's some. Yeah, and then, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's head on to the. Uh, wait, did you give us an answer, Junkie? I'm trying to remember. I always felt like um, this is from, from our era, but like the uh, Toad the Wet Sprocket. Was oh just yeah, some kind yeah. Of... That's a great band too. When it's like the dumbest. I thought name. that, yeah. and that name held them back. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. A great... I felt like somebody was like, "Let's." That was like what they some phrase they used to that's it that's like the term they used to whatever like they, they were gonna go jerk off toad the wet sprocket like that was their <laughs> like what they thought it was funny yeah the big call. head todd big head todd yeah g love and special sauce i mean there's a lot of dumb yeah, things yeah, out yeah. There. I, yeah i honestly did think that third dog night is three dog night is kind of a silly name too three dog night jeremiah was a bullfrog yeah <laughs> Tremendous fan, right? But but yeah, the name is stupid. Like, I know that's a good one. Okay, let's continue. Uh, let's see next. Yes, Pi- oh, Pilot did the song Magic. Yeah, that's that's a good jam. That's a good jam. Pilot is the name of the band who did the Magic song. Oh oh, it's Magic. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the next question. Um. Oh yeah. So John and George, uh, favorite Seinfeld episode. Now, we kind of did this already. Kevin and I did it on the Seinfeld Trivia Show way back in 2016, so I'm going to give it to Quickies first. Um, I love the parking spot episode. It's a good one. Ooh. Where they're... They, um, it's Jerry, and the guy should have been in the show more, the bald guy on the show, Mike, who calls Jerry a phony. Oh, I missed him. Yeah, Mike was great. Oh. Mike was that great. Like a wonderful little, oh, like, Michael it's a great Mike. debate. I mean, it's everything that was great about Seinfeld. <laughs> Why'd you like, tell him? <laughs> well, just can you debate like who would get, who should get the spot? Like, can you back like well, who pulls in front? You know, I can still remember things that. And they missed the I fight over that. Yeah, and um, 
So where where do you stand on that? Michael Jordan is so phony. Michael Jordan is so phony. (laughs) (laughs) Are you back in guy or are you pull in guy? What's your take? Oh, definitely, definitely back in guy. I love it, and I agree with it. 100 percent back in guy. Yourself, junk man. He is such a great pull in guy, though. That guy's like a maniac on the show. So yeah, yeah, that was so good. When you said when you said the parking spot episode, that guy. I do. I'm like, I'm pulling him forward. Sometimes you got the space that you're going to pull him forward. <laughs> when Chris said the parking spot episode, I, for some reason, I, my brain went to the parking Park garage, garage episode. Yeah, when they were yeah, looking yeah. for the car for the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That's... I also, I mean, it's hard to beat the masturbation one, too. That's just. That would be mine. The contest, number one. It's brilliant. It is su- right. it's just a perfect episode from start to finish. Just an amazing, amazing episode. So that's mine. Wow, I thought Dave, you would, you would obviously pick the Festivus, but it's a great one. Festivus is phenomenal, iconic. Yeah, yeah. But what I, I love, yeah, and most of anything, the Jerry Stiller ones. I mean, any of them are still oh, so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. But no doubt. Um, I I love the Jerry's parents ones too. Yeah. Oh yeah, he they they were funny too. <laughs> Jack, with, yeah, with Jack Clompus and yeah. going down, and I'm not force feeding a steak at four o'clock to save a, bu- a couple of bucks. <laughs> Jack Clompus was a he was a troll of, of his time, man. That was great. Take the pen, take the pen. Oh, the pen. That's a good one. <laughs> I I have a random question. All right. Uh, Seinfeld or uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm? No, it's still Seinfeld. It's still Seinfeld. There's more variety in the in the big characters, um, and, and it came I, first. I laugh way harder at Curb. Honestly. Well, I Seinfeld, mean, there's, Seinfeld's it, great. It's, it's valid it's, because they they don't have as many limits in terms of like what they can yes, do with it's language. Yeah, little cheat and, code yeah. Even Absolutely. Yeah. So, I acknowledge that. But. Yeah, that's interesting though. Yeah, Junkman, where are you? I never watched Curb, but I feel like I would probably like it. I think and you're gonna I love it. Never, show. you're gonna yeah, love I never, that. Yeah, I never. It might have been whatever. It was it HBO at the time? Yeah. yeah. Maybe I just. Yeah, it could have been. I was just living on the Cape and didn't have that kind of. It's on Netflix. Access, so, but like well, dirty Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah. It really is basically like Seinfeld continued, but just without actual Jerry Seinfeld. And the, in there. yeah, some of the early Seinfeld is hit or miss. So yeah. I mean, I don't know if. Curb enthusiasm was strong all the way through, so I can't really pick a curb which one. Curb definitely was picks up, but the Curb pilot is amazing. Like what got it made? It was originally just a special on HBO. Okay, it was really good. I mean, just I mean, Larry David is just the, what you know of him, and the interviews I've seen with him, he seems a very exhausting person to know. Yeah, like, so I, I hear that. Stuff that goes on, I hear him, that. and Cause... to see that. Would be I would be interested, but yeah, I I haven't seen it. I would say that I can only watch a few episodes at a time because I get so much anxiety after like watching a bunch of them in a row. Like everybody's yelling at each other at the end of every episode, but uh, it's very funny. It's a great show, <laughs> great show. Um, so wait, did you have a favorite junk man? What was your favorite? Well, like, officially your favorite episode. Um, uh, the one I just think about right off the top of my head that I laughed the hardest at it was the um. Uh, Kenny Rogers chicken. Oh, that's good. <laughs> like wow. chicken because roast. they switch places, right? They don't yeah. like doesn't. Uh, Kramer gets all. He starts wearing Jerry's clothes. They switch apartments, so he's like he starts acting all normal, and Jerry comes in and he's like, "I'm way stressed," and he starts talking about Bob Sacamano and. Yeah. Oh, the what? bizarre! Yeah, like basically they switched roles. Literally. I feel like that was the yeah. yeah. That was fun. No what sleep. is the what's the episode where Kramer gets the talk show set to? That's a that's the a Merv Griffin, oh, the Merv Griffin show. one. That yeah, was terrific too. it's good. <laughs> maybe maybe we need a co-host. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good. Okay, we, some more questions, and we'll wrap it up. Um, quickies, what is your favorite album of all time? Wow, what a mm-hmm. question. I mean, I, I really got to break into subsets of this yeah. question. But. Oh, uh, studio album, Physical Graffiti by Led Zeppelin. Um, okay. Live album, Phil Maurice by the Allman Brothers. Ooh, I have that one. I, I have both of those. Those are great, yeah. Those are kind of the two I would sort of, you know, it's hard to get past them for me. So. Yeah. 
Uh, those are great choices. Uh, they only asked you the questions, so Kevin and I we can't we can't comment, unfortunately. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Kev, what would you say? Like, what, how would you respond to that? What's your favorite? Born to Run, Springsteen too. I just gotta say too. But it's like when someone's asked me my favorite movie, I rattle off five movies. Yeah. Like, how do I? Right. right. I hear that. Well, that's why. You, that's yeah. Well, that's why it's you hard to pick one. Answers, like so. they're so great. Like my answer would be probably a night at the opera from Queen. It's just really uh, fun. Like the whole. I feel through. like when when there are people who are like they have one and like the opposite of what Chris just said, and they're like, "This is it. This is the only one." You're like, "I don't know if I want to hang out with you." That's yeah. a little bit. Like, that's a good point. You know, you're way too you know into Prince to start yelling at me. <laughs> like which we all think it's a great. Yeah, I, Those are great, great Purple albums. Rain is awesome. Like that's in my but, in my really like, high up you know, on my list too. So you okay, know. yeah, there was you know. music after the doors. Like everybody, calm down. But anyway, <laughs> Dark Side of the Moon, another fav- personal favorite of mine. I really like that one. Um, yeah, we can go on and on. But what comes to your what mind? Al- what album do you guys recommend to people? Ooh, wow. Because we talked, we hit them on earlier. For me, I always recommend to people. I call it the most underrated album of the '90s. So this is different from your favorite album, but mm. it's like, I feel like it's a more relevant question because everyone should have listened to Physical Graffiti. If you haven't, what's the point of me talking to you about anything? If you fucking don't know Physical <laughs> Graffiti, but you don't know Phil Maurice, go fuck your fucking self. But uh, I like it. Blind Melon Soup. Uh, everyone always sings Blind Melon is the one hit wonder, but yeah. that second album is so fucking blow your mind sensational. Is that the one with... No rain, or is it the one after this that? This one is with Galaxy. They're okay. very, you know, this is like they're all doing heroin in New Orleans, and it's all a fucking totally tripped out album. Okay, so I have the one. No one, the very few people have heard this album, but this is the album I go to people like you have to listen to this album. I, I get so, it. I get on that. I've heard the yeah. one before, but I didn't hear that one. I need to get on. That it. would be a good Chris. Some that would be a good. Um, you break that up by decade. That would be a good uh, yeah. conversation. I like yeah. that cuz and I like the I love the fact that Chris did not pick a stone cold grunge album to recommend from the 90s cuz that would be a little too cliche I, I think. would do it. I would probably go I would probably be between Nevermind and Melancholy and Infinite Sadness. Probably one of those two. Hmm. In terms of your favorite or what you would No, recommend? the what I would recommend them to listen cuz it's like a quintessential okay. 90s rock album for like, the for the for the time for the, yeah, the decade kind of defines the the genre, the the period the music of the time. Um and there's obviously better ones in terms of like if you want to get into hip hop like what's that what I probably have to go to Santoro and, and agency for that those recommendations but there would be equally good choices in that category. And country then you'd have like you know, like whatever. stop, just stop, dude. Don't do the country. We'll stop the country part. Don't okay. do it. We'll do, we'll do. But unless who do even blowfish count for the country? Just kidding. It, 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 no, let's not get there. Let's not go there. But um, so yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. And Kev, I'll, I'll get, I'll give it to you for that question. For the nineties. Oh, you can do the nineties, just... sure. But but just in general, like if you could recommend an album for a given decade, let's start with oh, the 90s. Oh goodness, um recommending an album or what have you recommended well you know people usually will come to me with bob dylan questions for some reason i don't know how i got that reputation but um and that's kind of hard but i don't know i mean i'm i I love the live albums too like chris does uh so much Um, but I don't know. Uh, What's the Bob Up Dylan album with uh, ISIS? That is Desire from Desire. like 1975. That was yeah, a hur- like, hur- little, hurricane. Little, hurricane is on that. I recommend that album to people. Like, it's a really know. good one. That's yeah. a good one to recommend to. the most Bob Dylan, so it's like that's a you know slightly deeper cut in theory. Yeah, for sure. And, and it was eighty yeah. and Bob. So. Yeah, there's that one's re- that one's really good, and that um, that seventy five seventy six tour was phenomenal. Where they had like the whole Rolling Thunder review with it was like yeah. they would do like five hour shows with Roger McGuinn would open up, and that Bob, was good stuff. Bob would paint his face like Sting. It was yeah, we'd do the white, <laughs> do the, do the white face with yeah, um, yeah. just like st- stalk around the stage like a tiger and then shout it. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's my favorite. There's a book on that tour. Um, 
Rolling written Stone. by written, written by a guy. Yeah, the guy was like embedded with it, a Rolling Stone guy. The book is phenomenal. Like the, you, there's a the Springsteen story in that book, which is just uh, he, he showed up to like he just got tickets to a show and they got obviously they were, went backstage and apparently just took a whole bunch of stuff that he wasn't ready for and just <laughs> went like wild backstage and by the end you know uh they there's a there's a there's a, a dylan lyric that is uh came looking so fine and left looking just like a ghost and they talk about that with springsteen because when they like had to like drag him out because you know he was with these that tour is full of just lunatics from the from Greenwich Village, not the sixties, the seventies version of, you know. So anyway, um, that was that's a good deal. One to re- re- recommend for sure. Cool. Uh, All right, I have to move this along a little bit. So yeah. a couple more questions, and we'll wrap up tonight. I know you guys have been great. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. Um, next is okay. Oh, we have some okay. We have some band names which are fun. Okay, so we have. Three Bev Bag Night. <laughs> That's good. Let's see. B, do we have another one? I thought I had another pastiche. No, not the case. Um, they, but I did get a comment from Digi 1980. I love how we never got to see Bob Sacramento. That's that's awesome. I agree with that. I think it's a great point. We should net. We should never have seen him, and I'm glad we didn't see him. So that's cool. Kind of like um, Norm's wife in Cheers. We never saw her either. Right, Vera. Right. Yeah, yeah that's right. We never saw Vera. I don't think we ever heard her voice either. No. Yeah, definitely. So that's very cool. Okay, so next question is: it says Dave, if you had to live in Europe, which country? I'm gonna cop out. I'm gonna go mm. England just because it would be easier adjustment. I'm lazy. I'm just I don't have to learn any new languages. They speak anymore. American, <laughs> but British culture is cool too. I kind of like the only thing. Well, but... you wouldn't. I don't. I, you might want to reconsider that because yeah, that's a fair point. The food the is food better is in other places. Awful. I've heard you... the food is just terrible. I'm not saying it's awful. I'm just saying there's better in other places. Yeah, no doubt. Like, what would you recommend then? And I get like, where would you go? Like Switzerland, France. Spain? I would think you'd pick. I think France would probably be the way to go. Or Italy, Italy or France, food wise, are would be the two choices. Oh, Italy, yeah, yeah, that's uh, interesting. Okay, you guys, what would you guys, what would you guys pick? Dave on the Amalfi Coast out west. <laughs> Italy would definitely have it going on with the food, though. You know, I think yeah. I'd go Italy actually, and I would have. And my family's from Ireland, but mm-hmm. yeah, me too. But I think I would. Either France or 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 uh, probably France. I would think I would pick France. Okay. Although people go ham in Spain, so that uh, could also ham on. Oh, that's everything. right. Ham is big in Spain. <laughs> on everything. Um, major tapas. Like, yeah, I mean you have the food there. I think I like the literary stuff from from France and some beaches. I I think I would pick France. I feel like I could learn French. I'm not saying I would be a hundred percent confident, but I think I could figure that out. We went to the French Caribbean, like, well, you know, they'll ago, be very forgiving of your, I survived. of your, of your ability to learn French. I mean, and, you know, I, I'm being sarcastic, of course, but, <laughs> but, uh, the wine must be amazing in either, both, either of those countries though, like Spain or France, right? Like just to use those ex- as examples in Italy. Too, oh yeah. Probably? Yeah. So I think France is another level though. Yeah. Even better than Google. Yeah, I mean the 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 pastry also would be considered in this in this computation. Like their their the pastry scene is I've heard really good. Cheese. Cheese. I mean, there's like a cheese cellar on every block. Yeah. Yeah. At least that's what I've heard. Oh my I goodness. watched a fucking twenty minute doc- documentary and I got to mix butter in fucking France. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Turn it over. <laughs> <Be sure. laughs> Oh, that's good. I love it. I love it very much. Okay. Uh, one more question, I guess. These comments are hysterical. Leo just ordered sticks tickets. Yes, you see that? <laughs> Leo just ordered sticks tickets. <laughs> These guys are hysterical. Oh, so good. I think that was it. There's no more. There aren't any more questions. We're done. Okay. I'll just check the board and see if there's anything there. They're killing me for not seeing The Godfather. I get it. Um, they were asking whether Junkie, like the reason you hadn't seen it, and they speculated it's because you thought that you were kind of being a contrarian, and that's literally what you said. Like, isn't that what you? That's said? That's exactly what I said. It for yeah. well, I would say for a good stretch of time, a good decade, I was try- I was trying to annoy my friends. 
to success. I think I lost a few friends out of it. I think it backfired on me. <laughs> They're like enough. We're, um, but I see. I think I've seen most. I don't know. I'm kind of a, a jerk sometimes. I, I don't think there are some popular things that I've purposely not watched. Oh, I think we've lit the fuse here. This is now an ongoing story. We fucking built a storyline here. You two have to watch this movie. And yeah. Fucking... Well, especially if your Dave's getting some feedback, because sometimes we talk about stuff on the show that goes nowhere. So yeah. if this is actually getting stuff, Dave, um... my whole thing is to build this into a media event. You want to be fucking. <laughs> It's a four part special. Simulcasting got Twitch, YouTube, you could, and like, <laughs> what's that thing that our fans? I think Toro recommended our fans today. So uh... I think that's porn. Oh, is that porn? Seriously? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it is that like for real? It. Seriously? Dave, Toro. see if that dueling pianos girl is doing OnlyFans. Because if so, I'm subbing tonight. <laughs> God. Um, Edgy Evan. That's that's awesome, not... and that's phenomenal. And I feel like we could almost do like a. The, the teaser or the preview is me trying to find where you can f- watch The Godfather because <laughs> I wouldn't even know. Yeah, seriously, There's, where do you watch it? I've never it, seen like... it come on my Netflix queue. I believe, well, I think it, I don't know if it's on Netflix still. Do it's we have to reach for HBO. Paramount Plus for this now? Like it's. I think it's HBO Max. I'm sure okay. there's multiple places. It would be better if like we, we turned into some kind of quest where we were like going, I don't know. I'll tell you, here's how you get yourself organized with this, okay? Pick a nice little Sunday, fucking two in the afternoon, put it on, same time, you start a fucking bowl of pasta. Is it like nine hours long? I mean, if you well, want all to three watch them, are, yeah. <laughs> if you watch them in once. No, all three are going to be more like edging towards 12. But... I don't feel like we should watch three. I, I used like... to be so intimidated by... You know what, I though? To... I feel like I should watch three and then tell people how three is better than the other one. <laughs> just to be... <laughs> to... Uh, dig my grave even so further good. but no i'm up for this i just i'll do it it's too. really long but and... listen you get yourself organized a little uh pasta because in the middle of the movie they fucking just start eating pasta and you'll be starving so it's well i gotta go to you know there's a local restaurant by me spumoni so i can get some pasta from them or just make it myself i'm down let's yeah. do it come on you can do it yeah, we can do it. We can do it. We're gonna do it. Most rudimentary dish out there. You got a food for you got a Twitter fucking a food Twitter. You gotta make, make a bowl of pasta. And soon, quicks a twi- a food. A yeah, food I mean, you have of your uh, half of your online profile world is about food. <laughs> make some pasta. I mean, I make. I, no, I, I, no I make my own. I'm, I no. I'm as Irish as they come, and I make sauce every other Sunday. Yeah, no, I I can do a nice. I can do a nice as good as... penny with some arabeata sauce or some marinara. Oh, there we go. Whatever. See? Yeah, nice. Like Let's go. I'm good. See? I this... can do that, yeah. Dave eats more than a sandwich. <laughs> this is... Dave's eating a pasta tonight, yes. This is good. And, um, okay. But I'm telling you guys, you make a nice interactive moment. You know, it's, you know. Do we, like, live do it? Random question. Well, the random questions Godfather edition would have to be. That's I mean, that just has to happen. Um, I don't know if we would watch it live. I think the people would would tune out. No, they've okay, all seen it already. Why they've already seen it? Yeah, that's, good. That's, yeah that's it. good. that's a good point. Let's not do that. But we'll do like reviews of like every movie, or even like half the movie. Right, because we've already got through the random questions of, of we could start off with how to, you know, forty year old men get through their life without. We've we've already done that. Yeah, that was, um, we addressed this part. Not to relive that part, <laughs> but it would be because most people, I would guess, Chris, right, watch this when they're like twenty. Which I felt at the time was late. Okay, so yeah, I saw it at twenty. We might have totally different. But I was the last one of my crew to probably see it. Everyone's like, mm-hmm. "You haven't seen the Godfather?" Like, I mean, like I know who's in it. I think, but I'm sure. I don't know, if Dave. I feel like we almost now we have to do this because. Yeah, it, it's it's been too and long. We both, and it's been too it's, long. It's there's, like, there's like a hundred movies love, I need to see. We both but like this movies. Is, yeah, like, this is way and up. We there, like right? movies that are from books. And yeah. Then... No, this needs to happen. I agree. I will also I'm note gonna, that, yeah, it's inexcusable. Obviously, I should, you know, I've I've grown as a person. I mean, I'm still kind of a jerk, but I, I think it's time to wrap you know, I, that, I agree. that part of my life Completely. up. It would be like a, it would be like putting the final nail into that old. I guess I can't kill him, but <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, quicks. I appreciate your. Of course, ideas. I'm going to ask. I, I'll be so like, I'll ask all the questions, and Chris will be like, "Oh my god, how do you not know?" <laughs> 
I'm like, are, did they, fil- I'm like, did they film that in California? Or in- and you're like, oh my god. Yeah. This is gonna be like you lived your whole life never seeing the color orange, and then you see it, and you're like, oh fuck, man. <laughs> Well, oh, dude, I heard. I don't know what that color is. That would all make sense. I heard a. I read a quote. Um, gosh, it was. There's gonna be no who... questions when you see it. You're gonna be like, I fucking get it. This is it. This is all here. <laughs> I I read a quote from I think it was like Elvis Costello or somebody in that like the '70s kind of thing, and he was talking about music and his, and he said, um, "Oh no, oh, gosh, so it doesn't matter." It was from somebody from the '70s, and he said they're talking about the sixties music. And he said, hearing Dylan and the Beatles was like going to sleep and the world was in black and white and waking up and it was in color. And yes. I was like, well, that's really, that's a really, really good quote. It was someone who was a more of a hard rocker. It wasn't Elvis Costello who said that, but he said, when I heard that and I was like, Oh wow, we can, we can write poetry and we can do, we can do all these things. It was mm-hmm. like waking up in a whole different world. And I feel like, I'm going to wake up and go like, holy shit. And I'm going to be telling everyone, dude, you guys got to see this movie. This is it's called Godfather. And it's <laughs> this guy and be like, whatever, idiot. Yeah. But I can't really compare this to, I mean, I took a while to watch. I don't know what else was compared to, but like Breaking Bad, I watched after the fact that every, and everyone else had seen it. But I'm sure I'm not and comparing. I'm, I relax, everyone. I'm not comparing Breaking Bad to The Godfather. Just saying. I'm usually late to the party on these things. <laughs> I love it, guys. Well, I got to wrap it up here. You guys have I been agree. unbelievable. Thank you so much. Quick. Uh, I agree. I'm so great to have you back with us again. Sorry, sorry to get in late, but uh, next time I'll be more in the fold. Oh, no worries, man. And and I will let you guys a little foundation and then I come in with a little fucking Well, I came in late too, so the first twenty five minutes is Dave fixing his, <laughs> yeah. his computer. I might have to edit that. It was pretty bad. It was just like down. me just talking for like twenty five minutes. I got and, into super weak and and I will say that too, Chris is and Jay, you guys are my favorite people. This is to doing this with the three of us is, is amazing. But in addition to that, having the the like question thing liven up again was really cool that was yeah. great. that's been a while um so, and maybe it's the fact that everyone's been quarantined for a year but i don't know it's, something happened and i i think i mean I, so i'm gonna make sure i try that again maybe da- i think dave's like doing some new things maybe you know has maybe. kind of yeah. gotten people to hey let's check this out again dave's not they or dave's doing i don't know but anyway, I, it was really, this was the best one. So many props to all of you guys tuning time. in tonight. I can't thank you enough. I mean, we had a great crowd tonight. I saw that we peaked at like 11. It's just, it's just insane. I can, um, yeah, I could do a whole show asking Chris random questions, I think. Yeah. Like, just, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of like, well, okay, see, if I go to this tangent, then we're going to be on for another no, hour. No, you know, so we not, can I'm do this some other time. Don't, don't waste, now, but we can do other shows. I can't thank you guys enough. All of you viewers, Chris, I mean, sorry, Quicks and, and Kev, great job, guys. Have a great weekend. Absolutely. Take Bye care. Boys. Punch it out. Peace out, guys. See ya. See ya. Ah, oh, man, what a show. Look at that. Wasn't that great? Kev was on. Quickies was on. You guys were on tonight. Thank you so much. I'm really, really glad. I'm blessed to have done this. I owe you so much. Thank you very much. We'll do this again when we can. I mean, maybe even next week. We'll see. Uh, we are going to have an NFL draft preview, I guess, next week with our friend um, Ron in New Jersey, which will be also just quite dynamite. We'll take your questions for that, too. I'm Dave Medina. You can catch us on, twi- on Twitter at DidCal, on the web at DidCal.com, on Facebook.com slash DidCal, YouTube.com slash DidCal, and all the other scenarios. We will see you next time. Bye.